it's always when it comes from the wrong person, and that just really pisses me off. I just think, is this what my life has come to? Like, I mean, to the glory of God, I know it's no reflection of reality, but I just think every one odd one, I'm just like, so you're telling me this is the energy I'm giving today. <sighs> Being a woman is hard, man. Morning, people. What is Tuesday? It's Tuesday, the 16th of January. Welcome to TDA, the day after your favorite news platform and the home of popular culture as defined by the culture. And as always, you have amazing hosts. Let's introduce ourselves. It's your boy, six foot plus of pure temptation. Big marks from the east side of the bridge. Good morning, people. So as you were saying, I think, has anyone ever said emperor? That sort of thing, is it? No. It's dead. Yeah, that's... That doesn't sound right. It sounds like you're like a medieval pharaoh or something. I think that's, that's, that, that energy is too masculine. Emperor. <laughs> you can't... Are you going to call me like that? Yo, emperor. It's like... <laughs> yeah, don't don't hit. It's not hitting. It's not. Okay. Well, um, as always, the Shade Queen. That's it today. That's all oh, I have today. Okay, okay. Bring you off a little bit. <laughs> 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 and they call me E Man, the pro black activist, TDA producer and news analyst. And of course the melanin is jam packed. Always, man. Always, always, always. How was everybody this morning? I'm good, man. Emperor's good. kings and all that. Uh good morning. Okay. Good morning, T.I. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, T. I. Brian. T.I. is somebody in the chat. Um, I want to get used to basically just saying hi to everybody who I could see. Oh, nice. That's already um, left a message. If you want to participate, you can't. Um, Who's y'all? As in us in the room? <laughs> yeah, whoever's looking at the chat. Um, <laughs> it says here that Brent was nuts for yesterday. Esther is a snitch. Why are you being Esther so what? violent with Esther? Excuse me? I don't know. What Brent was what yesterday? Brent was nuts for yesterday. Esther is a snitch. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what happened yesterday. What happened yesterday? <laughs> you just said this sound like, you know this is a daily show. This is a daily show. <laughs> an hour from now, you can't even ask me what we talked about an hour ago. <laughs> what happened yesterday? Mm-hmm. Esther's a snitch. I think it was something to do with you. No, that was another day. When did Brent snitch on you? Oh, that was last week. Yeah, Brent's always snitching week. on me. Oh, that's just that. I don't know if he said Brent's a snitch. <laughs> no, because you can't. Listen, autocorrect will not get you to type Brent and corrects to Esther. Whoever typed, who was that? Um, it was uh, Ti. This is how you want to go. No, in. he said you're the snitch. So Brent was moving. That's what I'm saying. So Brent trying to say it's a typo. It's not a typo. They meant I was a snitch. What did I snitch on? What did we talk about yesterday? I don't know. I don't remember the brown sheet chicken. If you can give us some context, mm. yeah. if you've got it, if you're not just pulling things out of your ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I can do the good morning reads. <laughs> and um, I think I think it says the sixteenth. It's the sixteenth. So, yeah, but somebody said I have the wrong date. But it's looking like the sixteenth. I put up. Is that Ti that said that as well? Because Ti about here. Nah, that's, that's Brian. All right, Brian. Morning, everybody. It's definitely sixteenth up, up there. What's the people going? For? Maybe they had a little conspiracy thing in the chat. Just make things up today. Brian, my Mr. Day could have been sleeping yesterday. Oh, it's TL. It's not TA. T up. Actual egg, you know. <laughs> okay, TL. But oh, they said it now, you know. Is it? What is it? Uh, the credit card thing. What credit card? I don't know. What are they talking about? I don't know. I don't know. What credit card? Oh. <laughs> Gina situation. Okay. Oh, I hear it. Because you know when Brent was trying to... When Brent said... Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when Brent didn't say... What's it got to you two snitching, though? I guess because I read your mind, maybe. So I snitched to what oh, I read telepathically. Okay. That's not... How is she... That's not... That's not... What, that doesn't qualify as snitching. Brent, you, 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 you don't think I do you that. You didn't read my board. mind. I didn't take that comment on board. You didn't even know what I'm saying. I'm, I know you what you're saying, I'm, and I'm, I'm choosing to ignore you. Past now, back to and I'm ignoring you because you because you're trying to say you that wasn't what you were going to say. I was going, and it was. Where you were that's going. not where I was going. Where were you going? Then? It was going. Where were you going? Way worse. Oh, way then you should have held on to mine. <laughs> <laughs> you should have tapped it to mine. Way worse. I don't know what's wrong with me, man. Yeah, that was. Yeah, there's a lot. We're just wicked. Me. But something about this room. <laughs> I feel like we all just possess the same spirit. <laughs> so. Yeah, so I go to church after. I come here. <laughs> <laughs> Cleanse. And I always thought that um, my house was um, covered, you know. In what? No, exactly. you got to be specific in what? Maybe it's occupied. It's covered, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That ain't no problem. It's definitely covered. Never mind. 
Yeah. Everyone good though. Okay, I'll start. Mm. Yeah, can't complain. You know? <laughs> why are you looking at me sideways? <laughs> Go, why are you looking at me sideways? No reason. No. Are you doing a Brent? Oh, you guys get one now. Why are you looking at me sideways? No, no reason. I was just playing with you. Oh, you Mind accept that though? Hmm? Yes, I will because it's just not you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to say, man? Hey, one second. So you said. um. A guy can't be calling me pet names outside. Or someone tried to call, what did he say to you? Hey cutie. He's like, hey cutie. You just come up there. Um, you just get your nails done in that shop. So when someone's <laughs> approaching you, a stranger, what's the... <laughs> you know sometimes, yeah, like, I'll be real, this, this is what it is, yeah. It's the glory of God, yeah. When it comes to guys that date and whatever, whatever, my CV is nice, right? And we only get better each time. Amen. I'm dating the uh, CEO next. Because when I tell you, the job has <laughs> been going up. So it's only... See you next, right? Cool. But sometimes, every once in a while, because men have more confidence than women do, because women don't move to men, y'all should change that. But every once in a while, it's sprinkled in, dare I say, with some foolishness. And it's just annoying. And I don't mean to sound like a bitch or sound arrogant. So, But what, I sound how I sound. It's annoying. What's an acceptable line to approach you with? You can approach me with any line if you are my hmm. spec. If you're not, there's nothing you can say to me that would not irritate me. This is this is something I think all men have observed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about man. like, excuse me? If you just said excuse me and... That's fine. Excuse me is fine. But if you come in talking about, oh, cutie, empress, queen, shut up. Shut up, you beg. I do know I'm a queen. I could be, I could be the most evil person. I could be the one that turns your life upside down. You'd be an evil queen. Okay, no. <laughs> no But yeah So I'm, I'm not really into No Because I think sometimes well, If a guy's like Really really nice And like friendly and stuff Even if he's not Quote unquote my type I don't really have a type But even if he's not my type Because he's so warm and friendly It's like Yeah do you know what I mean Like mm-hmm. They're funny I love a funny guy right mm. But if you're just Just stop man Just a, just an annoying aura That follows some men and it's like, there's, no, there's nothing they could ever say that would just make things... Just stop it. You're annoying. To me, everyone's got this person. I, f- I believe that everyone's got, you know, their own person that, you know, they can love and will see light in them and all that kind of crap. But not me. I don't know. The managers need some advice. So they might have thought, like, hey, cutie was, was pleasant. It's just the way you said it, man. You just jump scare. I literally just stepped out of the shop. I said, hey. Dick! <laughs> First of all... And the area I was in, I thought I was going to get mugged. I, he literally threw me off. And I was like, okay. You need to calm down. It's too much energy. And I don't like, like, you're making it, because you were so loud, yeah, that now everyone's really turned around to see if I am cute. Stop it, man. Just stop it. <laughs> just stop it. Just, just stop it. Yeah, so it's not really my thing, man. Yeah, I don't know if my preferred... I don't like being moved to in public, to be fair, though. No. No, I just think it's, it's very awkward. If it's like there's people around and stuff, it just feels very like, like I can't, there's no way for me, like I think about the other person, like I don't want to embarrass you. So if I'm going to let you down, it's like there's an audience to see this now and I feel bad. Mm. And I don't like when people make me feel bad. So if someone's like moving to you in like an event or something, are you aware that they've got an audience while they're talking to you? It depends what kind of audience. What kind of like event we're at? Like a, and where we're at in the event. You know, sometimes you're like, where your table is, you're kind of like in the middle. Mm. Yeah, everyone's seen this. But say like, we're like, one of the tables to the side, then mm. fair. And then they see you talking and eventually they see your phone come out. Yeah, but I like, don't bring your phone out too quick because it's just like, oh, they know what you're doing here. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just, yeah, don't bring your phone out. Like, don't approach me with said phone in hand. That's orcs. That's big energy. That means you know what he's stepping for. Phone's yeah, out. Yeah, he's, he's step right back. No, thank you. You need to, we need to have a conversation first. Like, at least, like, hello, get to know my name kind of thing, and then get your phone out. Okay. Yeah. But I'm not really a fan of being moved to in, in the dance room, though. I feel like the kind of guy I'm looking for... So he's not in the club? He's not regularly in the club. He's the type who comes for his friend's birthday. Uh, like me. I'm not in the club regularly. But when I go, it's for someone's birthday. And it's like, okay. Show my face kind of vibe. That's a good line. Guys should use that. Oh, gosh. See? <laughs> yeah, I'm just at my friend's birthday. I don't really... 
don't really <laughs> frequent in these but places. But the bouncers know your name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I saw you at the door. They were saying hello and everything. Mm. It's tricky. I, I do feel. I do feel for men. That's why I'm very pro moving to men, because I know how. Like Tough I've ones. I've come up with all these rules, yeah, and that's just me. But obviously, there's other. There's so many other women that will have their thing, that their preferences and stuff like that. Obviously, you got, you got the women that don't really mind either way. Mm. Just speak to them. They're fine. And that's no shade. <laughs> that's just me stating the obvious. But so I feel for men. But that's I'm very. I, I'm also pro because I tell women. Go for what you like. Otherwise, you end up with guys that like you and not guys you particularly like. Talking about you growing to like a guy. No, man. <laughs> we don't do that. Get you a man that you like. Yeah. That's good advice. Well, you guys are welcome. Okay. You heard it there first, guys. Bang, it's a TED mm-hmm. talk. But yeah. Bren, how are you, sir? I'm all right. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you very much. Sir? In the time. You, man? I'm fine, man. Just, you know, trying to acclimatize this cold weather. I can't at all. My manicure was telling me, because I was like, oh, I can't wait for spring. Da, 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 da. And she was like, oh, February is worse. I said, that's great. Yeah. That's exactly why I came into here. Thank you. It's a damn shame, man. I think it might have snow this week, innit? No, I don't think so, no? you know. Okay, I thought it might snow this week. Because even today, it's, it was minus two when I left my house, mm. but my car wasn't iced. Oh, was it? There's bare ice on the cars, you know, my No, nah, not mine, you know. Mm. It's like a little frost, but I can still see. Okay. I came off to be transporting water back and forth. I'm not doing all that. And I tried to use the water in my car. Mm. Pulled it, froze up straight away. I said, okay, this yeah. is silly then. I'm driving like this and God, Jesus will take the wheel. And he did. <laughs> I got here safe. But yesterday when it was at zero or one, mm. my car was iced. So I just don't know how it works. Mm. I don't know. It's this confusing country, man. Maybe my car was there for longer, actually, maybe. I don't know. Mm. But we move. Well, I hope you guys in the yes. chat are doing well as well. Hope you guys are good. Uh, please kindly like the video mm-hmm. while you're here. Did um? Oh no, they did explain it. The whole Gina thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Well. Oh, before we go, yeah. I want to send a, a message to a daughter of mine <laughs> <laughs> who's at home, laying in bed, and doesn't want to go to nursery. Do you know how funny that is? I hear it. <laughs> Actually, you I need hear it, to go to nursery. <laughs> yes. I think maybe because obviously. Obviously, when I come to the show, she doesn't yeah. see me in the morning. Innit? Okay. Yeah. By the time I get back, I don't see her. Oh, so she's like, I'll wait for you this time. Yeah, I think so, man. She's, <laughs> she's like, I'll go, wait man. for you. You come back, you meet me here. Yeah. So you need to go nursery. Yeah. I'm going to buy you something nice. Yeah. Big up her. Love mm-hmm. her. Sorry, are you suggesting that she's watching it? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah she said she wanted to watch it. Oh, mm-hmm. my goodness. Yeah. I know. Only the first part, though. Yeah. Oh, this right. part. Yeah. And, but I'm going to carry on as if she's watching and said, which is wholesome <laughs> content. <laughs> I did want to ask something else. Maybe so just turn the TV off for a second. <laughs> 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 Would you ever give your kids like a day off school? Because if my kids wake up and say they won't go to school, guess what? They don't go to school today. What? <laughs> but like, not all the time. Just once in a while. Because I get it, man. I get it. I actually understand. Do you know how long a school day is? No days off. Right oh, now. I get it. I honestly get it. Mm-mm. Nah, I would, man. I would have a fun day. Not real school, though. Like, nursery. Hmm. Nah, real school, I'd do it. Serious? I actually would. Because it's not going to be an everyday thing. It's like a once in a while. But you know there was the kids once testing a year. you. No, no, you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. Let me see. Like, what, what 100% I do, I go, once is you show them that gate. Hmm. No. They're leaving that wide open all the time. No, no. Okay. Yeah, I'm not installing that kind of behavior. If you can wake up, talk about you don't want to go from nursery. Then go to <laughs> school. We'll have, like, one day a year. Like per year, mm. per school year, that's not a lot. That's literally fine. And then what you're gonna do something with them on that day? Yeah. And then that gives them a pep in the step to carry on. Other days, other than faking illness and all that kind of stuff, I've got time for that. You're moving like they're doing A levels. They ain't got no. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't got no stress. I think it's a good man. What is that? All Jack? Oh no! All play with no Jack. What is it? <laughs> all school. What all is work, this set? No say? play. All yeah. work, no play makes. Jack like and dog boy. boy or mm. My kid went bright and happy. Yeah, one, I feel like once a while, once in a while, like once a school year, and mm. then that's how literally a fun day. Mm. And it just gives you pep in your step to carry on going. Obviously, you've got to teach them how to lie, otherwise, you, you get fined. <laughs> but yeah, man, I'd, I'd do that. I'd enable that, that behavior. Boy, well, go to school, go to nursery. <laughs> Apparently, she responded <laughs> when I was talking to her. She said no. <laughs> <laughs> this is 
said, no. She said, if you want me to go, you come here. You <laughs> get me to go. She's taking advantage of the fact that I'm not there. <laughs> and I don't want to say certain things on the show that I would say. But... Go the to one school. Girl, I got you. He can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how funny kids are? She said, no, you know. She's talking to the TV. She said, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love kids so much, man. I love switch? kids. Does they? Where's the switch? Switch of what? The be uh, the switch. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about switching the thing. So wait. <laughs> It's all you, King. Emperor. I'm going to start using that, actually. I'm going to start using that. <laughs> it's sticking. Yeah, man, it's sticking. <laughs> I love it. All right, so our first headline. The UK will send 20,000 troops to one of NATO's biggest military drills since the Cold War to practice repelling an invasion by Russian forces. Army, Navy, and RAF personnel will be deployed to the 31 Nation Steadfast Defender exercise in a bid to provide vital reassurance against the menace of Vladimir Putin. Mr. Shapps will set out his vision for how the UK will rebuff potential threats as allies remain concerned over the danger posed by the Kremlin with the war in Ukraine now approaching its second year. Two years or no? It's gone quick, man. Um, Shapps' announcement comes after Prime Minister Rishi Sunak made a surprise visit to Kiev last Friday to unveil a further £2.5 billion support package in 2024 to 2025. In total, since the war began, the UK will have provided almost £12 billion of aid to Ukraine. Right, and this is what the Prime Minister was saying. He's also vowed to continue standing with the country. Mm. <laughs> Next headline. <laughs> <laughs> Next headline. Um, this same Grant Shapps that we were just chatting about, the Defence Secretary has, has been unable to explain why the UK has accepted asylum seekers from Rwanda if the country is deemed safe by the government. Quizzed on the story by Sky News regarding six people being granted asylum, Mr. Shapps said he was not aware of the specifics of those cases and defended the UK's plan to send asylum seekers to Rwanda. Analysis of Home Office figures shows that 33 asylum um, applications have been lodged in the UK on behalf of 51 people from Rwanda since the first UK-Rwanda deal was announced in April of 2022. And Dominic Grieve, who's the former Tory Attorney, Attorney General, said that if we are granting asylum to individuals from Rwanda, it does call into question how Rwanda can be described as a safe country because it's plainly not safe for those people. No asylum seekers in the UK have yet been sent to Rwanda. And our last headline, um, a man has been charged of alleged plans to disrupt the London Stock Exchange. He was among six people arrested on suspicion of conspiracy to cause criminal damage. The six, free women and free men, are pro-Palestinian activists who intended to target the LSE causing damage in an effort to prevent the building opening for trading on Monday. The plot involved tactics similar to those used by environmental activists such as Just Stop Oil, who have attached themselves to buildings. Monday's planned protest was intended as part, as, as a start of um, a week of action for Palestine action, about which uh, the police said that they are still gathering intelligence. No physical trading takes place at the LSC headquarters, so it's unlikely trading will actually be affected, but the LSC has declined to comment. And that's it for the headlines. Thank you very much. Let's get into what you say in topic of the day. All right, people. So today's topic of the day. Uh, this, so this was sent to sent to me via uh, Christy, the Queen of BRE, bigger up every single time. And Brent, there's a link that I want you to play here. Yeah. Um, I like last time. You just have to slide across. I think like two or three times. Whatever. Mm. Uh, where does she send stuff to? You? Uh, Instagram. All right. So you hear that, people? Emmanuel can be contacted via Instagram <laughs> for the topic of the day <laughs> ideas because they keep coming to me. Mm. And I said, did you go to Emmanuel? And they say, no, he doesn't read his Instagram comments. I'm like, all right, be a babe or use your babe account and then send it. <laughs> Seven nonsense with this. You know, I could do as well. That option of always emailing as well. Yeah, that's much better. What's his email address? Mm. Oh, it's just uh, the TME one, isn't it? Ah, okay. Oh, sorry, the, the, the day after one. The day after one. Okay. Is that so okay? We, or? we say in the intro and the bloody outro. Yeah, I, I don't want to come across rude when I keep saying man or send it to me, man. So, mm. 100%. or just or just send it to yes, just send it to my Yeah, because there's some one. good ones coming in. Mm -hmm. Just coming yeah. to me. Okay, cool. And then Christy seems to have a line, straight line to you. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> Christy's a. <laughs> just hate it, man. Anyway, Brent, 
If you don't mind, can you yes. play the link, please? And while you're getting that up, this is basically just about um, ZZ Mills making some comments about Lil Nas X and his recent behavior. Oh, your daughter's tuned in. Let's take this off. Is what? Is your daughter's tuned in. No, no. This is she should be going to school. <laughs> This is about being inappropriate. Yeah, you're definitely not listening to anything. I got this man's nerves, man. At all. All right. Here we go. X, yeah, he has been doing the absolute most um, with Christianity. His new album, um, his artwork came out for a single, I think it was, and he was literally being lifted onto the cross and like mocking Christianity. Or in his, in his, he said that he's not mocking Christianity, but you know, using imagery of Christianity and just not using it in the right way. Do you know what I mean? They did a, he did a put a video up of him eating the Holy Communion, and it's just really distasteful. Okay, um, and I can understand why Christians would be offended by that because it. Is something like that is it's just it is just genuine your now like you can tell like you're doing it for a reaction you're doing it to get clicks you're doing it for whatever discussion online about why people take the like why people think they can take them the the out of Christianity and mock Christianity and like Christianity is probably one of the most disrespected religions uh, amongst all the other religions and I genuinely think it's because. Christians don't take it seriously. I don't think Christians Christian hard enough. I think a lot of Christians are lukewarm. I think a lot of Christians have one foot in and one foot out. And the world can see that. Like, if Christians are not taking their own religion seriously and adhering to because a lot of stuff as well like I find a lot of, and I say I'm saying Christians because I grew up as a Christian but how I feel is like the Bible clearly says it's the worst thing is to be lukewarm you're either hot or you're cold God would prefer you to be cold than lukewarm and lukewarm and I feel like everyone discussion online one thing about Muslims yeah although they might do stuff that might be um, against their religion they take it very seriously they're going to pray. They're going to, you know, do what they, five times a day. They're going to make sure, you know, I, I don't know how many Christians outwardly portray a Christian lifestyle, if that makes sense. And when I, what I mean by that is, you're not of the world. And as, as, as harsh as that may sound, but the Bible clearly tells you not to be of the world. And I know Christians that are not of the world. I know them. I know them. And they, 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 don't, they don't play about. They don't mess about, yeah? Um, one thing about Muslims... Oh, so this is going on yeah. a bit too long. All right. <sighs> so... I guess, what, what, what's your first thoughts on this, though? Uh, first thoughts, Lil Nas X is an egg. Mm -hmm. That will, like, always be the same. Just like how God is God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Lil Nas X was an egg, is an egg, and forever will be an egg. And he just gets my damn nerves. Mm -hmm. He definitely does what he does. I agree with Zizi in that he does what he does for, like, shock, for the shock value. He does what he does because he knows that Christians are going to react. That's why he does what he does. Mm. So that's always going to be a thing. I don't pay attention to him. I literally blocked him. When he had those Nike trainers that meant to come out, that, that apparently had the blood of Jesus in them. That's when I blocked him. Even Nike had to, they dropped, they did not release the shoes because they were like, okay, so you're taking a bit, a bit too far. It's like Satan shoes or Satan kicks, something like that anyway. But that's when I blocked him. So I, I don't see anything from him. If I go on the blogs and I see something about him, I literally just scroll past it. Mm -hmm. I don't engage with him because I know why he's doing what he's doing. Um, about big Christians being lukewarm, I don't agree with that because people are always talking about how Christians are judgmental. Mm. So, you know, I think we've got to pick a side. Are you saying that Christians are not really being Christians in society mm. today? If that's the case, then why are Christians always trending every other week about them being judgmental? When a Christian and her talking about, you know, people being off the world and blah, blah, blah. When something goes up on, goes online and you have a Christian that says, oh, this is not da, 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 da. God wouldn't want to blah, blah. You start to call them Bible bashers and start to accustom them for, for projecting their beliefs on other people. So, we can't say that we don't, we can't, you can't, in society, you can't tell who's a Christian because you sure can. And mm -hmm. they get cussed every other day for literally being Christians. Um, I do think, 
I feel like the reason why Christianity is taking the piss, obviously with, with religion, I believe Jesus, Jesus is the one true religion. I believe Jesus Christ is the one true savior. That's it. And I personally feel like that is why it's not taken, like the blasphemy on this side is crazier mm. than any other side because this is a guess. This is the... Okay, I get you. Do you know what I'm mm-hmm. trying to say? Mm-hmm. So there's that. Um, what else? Yeah, I think I'll pause there for now. I think I've <laughs> said enough. Mark's Brent. <laughs> Why is Mark looking at me like this today? <laughs> um, yeah, Little Nas X is always taking the piss, to be fair. Um, blasphemous you. <laughs> the blasphemous you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just his story. But to be fair, I think um I think um Christianity are like mm. as a religion, they're not very strict. A bit, yeah. They're a bit loose mm. with, the, with, with the rules. You know what mm. I'm trying to say? So this is where the problem comes from. And I don't think the religion's um gate you know gate what? kept. It's not actually enough. that's a word. You don't just letting anybody join. Mm. All you gotta do is walk down to the front, talk about and shake a little. Shake little a little. Shimmy. <laughs> <laughs> little Harlem shake. <laughs> and there you have it. You're past the next. I was gonna ask there quickly. Are there like fake you said we got like fake pastors and whatever, yeah. Are there mm. fake imams in that? Yeah. Actually no, they are because I, I was listening to a podcast called Scamfluencers, yeah, and there was like mm. this fake Buddhist monk guy talking about yoga can heal and all that kind of crap. But anyways, okay. But that was not the question that was asked about um, what this Zizik uh, said. What's the question? I thought the question was, um, are we too, like, passive? We're letting everything, um, people insult us without actual retribution. But that's what I just said. They're not you strict said, enough. You said that we let everybody loose. in. Yeah, that was just... I was just saying that. You just wanted to get it off your chest. Yeah, I just wanted to get that. Off. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to get. I just wanted to get that off. I, I that said one. the religion's not gate kept enough because they just accept all types of disrespect. Mm. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like okay, but I mean, is, couldn't the first thing also be a point though? Because if you're kind of just allowing anyone in to this belief yeah. system, surely when they're in, they just feel they can do anything. And exactly, that's the problem. We're getting infiltrated mm. by heathens. Because when you think about it, I feel like part of the reason why it is because Wait, you got pastors. Mean? What does this mean? What, what does that mean? I'm about to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> what were you asking? Because I thought this started with Little Nas X, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when you say we get infiltrated by heathens. Yeah. Infiltrate in my head is like a children horse type of thing, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you're welcomed in, you're parading like you are said thing yeah i never knew that L- L- nas x was there claiming he was a christian yeah so i'm going off the, so when we watched the video um Eman said what's your thoughts on what zizi was saying and with Lil nas x like i never have anything el- else to say other than the guy's an egg he does mm. what he does for shock value so i don't believe i can't give him my energy because i know that i don't get offended by the things he does because he's just a fool mm. do you get what i mean but on the path of i'm talking now to the point where she was saying how Christians are lukewarm and we're this and we're that and whatever. And that's how, that's why I brought up the whole, yeah, but people get cussed all the time for being judgmental Christians. So mm. if you're saying they're lukewarm, how are they lukewarm if they're standing up for mm-hmm. the truth that they read in the Bible, but you guys cuss them for doing that. And so when I said about the infiltrating, I'm talking even to the fake pastors and stuff. Like it's difficult for, it's difficult for the world. I think it's difficult for the world to take Christianity serious mm-hmm. when we keep seeing pastors who are asking people to suck breast for healing. Do you get what I mean? So when it's like the the people that are meant to be the leaders of this faith mm-hmm. are jokers and are just being a damn fool, I feel like that's why people think our oh, Christians don't take Christianity serious. Mm-hmm. But the Christians that do take Christianity serious are constantly calling out these pastors, constantly getting cussed out in the comments, um, calling out these pastors mm-hmm. and actually living in the truth they're meant to believe. And I th- also think people have this idea of what a Christian is meant to be, that like you want them in like the night 1700s types of dresses and acting like or boring as mm. if yeah, you shouldn't have a personality, you shouldn't have anything. But that doesn't, that's not the truth. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Because if you, yeah, it's, it's just not how it's meant to be. So I feel like, yeah, people misinterpret Christianity anyway. I I have an interesting um, thought on what she said last, because she was comparing Christianity to, to, to Islam. Right? Oh, yeah. And sometimes it, it baffles me 
what people like her mm-hmm. actually expects Christians to do. Yeah. Are we supposed to move like how the Muslims move mm-hmm. when um, their uh, esteemed prophet is, is insulted? Because we know how they move when that's the case. Or mm-hmm. we know what they threaten if it is yep. said thing is done. That's not Christianity to me. Yeah, because as a Christian, if you cuss somebody who cussed you, they'll be like, that's not very Christian. Mm. So yeah, that's the word. I don't know if it is that they're expecting the Knights of the Templar type of vibe. <laughs> or the, the, the Jesuits and them, them mad there. Where they went, all right, is that what you're doing? Off, off with your head. Yeah, off Is that the head. vibe they're asking for? They're not expecting You shouldn't be able to that. disrespect Jesus in public. So what on public are they looking off for with as his head. a response? That's the, is that what he's saying? That's so the vibe. Don't, don't that's hang on the vibe. Because yeah. that's the vibe that Jesus wants. <laughs> Huh? That's the vibe that Jesus extols. An eye for an eye. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about Old Testament? You started huh? this. Because you said off of your head. Talk about the First Testament. <laughs> <laughs> Not the old one. That's, that's, the, first one. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the first, first commandment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the one that kickstarted all of this. The, one, the OG. <laughs> You're an egg. Talk about the OG Testament. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh but when when people are actually going to war for for Christianity and doing them all them type of things, there, are you basically saying you think that was wrong? No, because David and them used to they used to kick it off, boy. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm even talking about afterwards, like after Christ has come and gone, yeah. And people are actually like you have Christian states and like I'm saying, like Templar, and, you know what I mean, like yeah. organizations like this. Are you saying that that was wrong then? Because if you if you're asking the questions, that what Jesus would want. Are we saying at that time it was wrong? No, 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 we're definitely not. Because Jesus, God is a God of balance. <laughs> <laughs> he will off with your head and then he'll forgive you and give you salvation. Mm. Grace. Because, because I, think, so, yeah, I yeah. think that God will tell you to wear lace to a land of heathens. He don't mind telling you that. Yeah, yeah. I tell you, don't, don't you dare take the lamb, ox, oxen, <laughs> all their women. <laughs> but go forth and kill them all. <laughs> because all, all them things, I, I think part of the reason is, like, I... I pretty much you guys, um, I think, are saying it, right, is all of that happened such a long time ago yeah. that people have forgotten. And also, I think it's because we live in the West as well. Just my opinion, right, where typically this was thought to be like a Christian state. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This part of the world was all Christianized, right? So you can kind of afford to have people who are lukewarm and different degrees of, 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 Chris, of, of seriousness yeah. when it comes to Christianity. But if, if a smaller group is amongst you, they would feel the oppression far more and may have to put up their defences. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know. I, I think maybe that's that's part of it as well. I feel like, I feel like that's the problem. That we, I feel like that is... I see where she's coming from with the lukewarmness as well. Mm-hmm. Because Christians will just redefine things to suit their lives. That's not how it works. And mm. I'll tell you, the Bible's kind of outdated anyway. So it doesn't really cover that. Or when God said don't steal, mm, he didn't really mean, you mm-hmm. know, fraud. He just meant, you know... Don't go and kill somebody and then steal from them. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like Christians love to love to remix things. Obviously, and I think it's easier to know what it is that Christians uh, do because again, I mean, I know you got you got to like adjust with the times and stuff like that. And I'm sure fraud wasn't prevalent those days, but I'm, it comes under the, the yeah, stealing a, banner, isn't it? It would have meant. No, no I didn't mean that literally. That was just an example okay, of like yeah. how people would remix it to suit them. So, for example, actually, there's some churches, right? that I've heard, that the pastor's doing fraud, the people that are contributing to the maintenance of the church is doing fraud and whatnot, but then they will come in the altar on Sunday and give a testimony that God provided. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm, that wasn't the specific example, I was, but I'm just saying how people would remix whatever it is that God says yeah. to suit them as long as they feel like, okay, do you know what? I can, I can sleep at night. Yeah. But that's not how it's meant to be. God's word is actually... The same. And even when people speak about God's word being relevant today, I always find that interesting because God's word is relevant yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It actually just it covers everything. Fraud is one of the oldest um, practices, to be honest. Is it? Yeah, them scribes and Pharisees got licks in the temple for a reason. <laughs> or them tax collectors. <laughs> Matthew and them. Crazy. But I'm not trying to get onto Muslims at all because this is not what this session is about. But i got bare friends that are Muslims. And they be doing all sorts of stuff that's haram and still violently basically saying, I don't talk to mm-hmm. uh, me about this, that, and the next. You can't mention my, mm-hmm. my prophet. So I don't know if that's the vibe that 
she's asking. There's nothing Christians. wrong with being hypocritical. We're all hypocritical. There's nothing wrong with we. Like, yeah, there's Christians not being Christian stuff. I hear it. No, but we all live. But we in, don't know. We, don't use don't use the comparison with with. with we um, all live in Islam, sin. Yeah. We all live in sin. But even so, that's even the perfect comparison because there no one ain't no one ain't like three or four in it. We're all humans, isn't it? But they still will live in the same sin that we do, but still please the religion. I hear what you're saying, but she Stringently. said Christians and Christian it. Uh, she and made several yeah. points. Mm. Several points. So she talked about, hey, you're not even following what it is that you are, are preaching, right? She sat up that way. Then she moved on to something else. So I'm talking to that. Okay. So if it is you're comparing um, Muslims with Christians, also mention oh, a lot of my Muslim friends are yeah. doing the hella haram stuff. But then why why is that the case then? <laughs> that that in every belief system, again, let's just compare Christianity and Islam, right? That you get you get people who are lukewarm. It's always mm -hmm. always going to be yeah. the case, right? But in one faith, nobody crosses that line. That's because can I say that because people are scared of Muslims. This is that's the reality. People are scared of Muslims. That's the reality. People have their own stereotypes about who Muslims are, and mm -hmm. so they stay out of Muslim business. Mm -hmm. They believe them when they say they're gonna do what they do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Calm down. They believe them. But one thing, people are always in Christian in Christian business. Mm. Always in Christian business, and that's the that's the thing. Mm -hmm. So it's easy for you to be judging Christians and whatnot mm -hmm. because you actually we don't know the entirety of what goes on in the Muslim side of things. Yeah, we don't know. Mm. I'm sure there's like fake imams and stuff like yeah, that. 100%. There will be. I've heard of some stories and whatnot, mm -hmm. but they don't get highlighted because again, the world holds Christians. I feel like the world holds Christians to a different standard, mm. to a completely different standard. If a Muslim comes and says, you know, I listen to music, I ate a bit of pork, you be like, oh, that's crazy. But if a Christian said, oh. Had a little bit of sex. Now <laughs> you want to get a pitchfork out. I think people hold the Christians a different. But I also hear it. I also hear it because, because <laughs> a lot of the oppression and colonization mm. was off the back of them screaming that they're also Christians. Do you understand? Yeah. So they're getting their comeuppance. They're getting their revenge now. Yeah. And I then hear. that's not the type of Christianity that I subscribe to. Subscribe boy. to. But that's what they. That's when how they when you say they're getting their revenge, what do you mean? All of these people who want to basically malign Christianity and mock them and this, that, and the next, and quote unquote okay. infiltrate this, that, and next. But the longest while they've been peddling the, the worst type of sins and then covering it up like it's yeah. they're higher than thou and, and, and pious and this, that, and next. So most times it's not my Christianity that they're coming for, it's them pooping them man there. You get me? Mm. Yeah, because were, were there any Muslim slave owners? Yeah. yeah. 100%. See, them. but you any of I, I've, I've never, I, I just found out now. Mm. I never knew that because, again, it was when you talk about slave owners, I was like, oh, they were like, they were Christians and da 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 da. So I feel like Christian, Christianity gets a bad rep. There were different which countries, the time periods, sir? though. Huh? Which country, sir? During the time in which is that she's referencing? Yeah, there are different time periods. If, you, if you're talking about slave owners, like during transatlantic slavery, no, that's that was a white European thing. Yeah. But then after that, when it, the emergence of Islam came, then you had like a good 800 years of Arab slave trade. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's a different um, thingy. Yeah. Do you feel though, like even like you, you mentioned earlier about grace and stuff, right? Yeah. Do you feel like certain things that's intrinsic to Christianity is the reason also this is like this occurs? Because remember, I remember even when Yusuf was here, I, I, I made a point to say that why is it, yeah? That <laughs> <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> why, so silly. why is it that every time even Ramsey as well right why is it that every time um, you speak to Muslim they'll say oh I'm not perfect but the, they always start their sentence with I'm not uh, they perfect they because they know what they do but Christians like never say that yeah. <laughs> you know you're not perfect, perfect or not. that's, why. So it's that's a, the thing that's think, what it is I think Christians don't aspire to perfection because Christians are aware that we can't be perfect in this life like mm. yes I have salvation yes the Holy Spirit lives in me and whatnot. Mm -hmm. however I'm surrounded by temptation. Not that I give in to them all the time or give in to all the temptation that, you know, comes my way. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I don't think Christians, well, most Christians or some Christians, I mean, let me not give stats, but don't strive for perfection. Whereas Islam, I guess, I feel like maybe Islam teaches you should be perfection. You should do this this many times a day. You should do this, you should do this. You should. It's like a there's a check checklist of things you have to do in Islam. And with Christianity, it's not so much a checklist. It's just more how you need to be living. Mm. It's not like pray every mm -hmm. like five times a day or pray do this. Da, da, da. It's, not a it's just do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I also think as well, I think the Bible is very much misinterpreted. Like I've heard people read a verse that I know what the verse means, and when they interpret it, I'm just thinking, what the hell? How the hell did you get that? And what they're saying is complete BS. Do mm. you know what I mean? So I feel like that's also 
that's also part of it. Like, yeah, man. Even like when you think about with God, like, God loves the sinner but hates the sin. Mm-hmm. But Christian, Christians will tell you, don't judge. Mm. No, but God actually asked us to look at a brother and if your brother's, you know, not da, 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 sit down, have a word with them, correct them, blah, blah. But is that defensiveness of, well, don't judge me because you're not perfect either. Mm. It's like, okay. But, yeah. I mean, because at the end of the day, and I think um, you're, you're, you're pretty much 100% correct here. And I think a few people in chat are even saying a similar thing about you can't know how many Christians are being serious or not being serious. Yeah. The, these are general sweeping statements that don't really make no sense. Mm-hmm. But I think at the end of the day, everyone can kind of um, see that Lil Nas X wouldn't do this if this was his man. He couldn't. No chance. I wish he would though. <laughs> just one time. He wouldn't make he... another song ever again. It's, no, but I just wish the spirit would just push him. A spirit that's roaming inside of him. Didn't he say he was going for... Well, he wouldn't do it now, obviously. I thought he was going for the Aki's next. What? Sorry. Aki's, I said. Who's Aki's? That the term that Muslim brothers use. Yeah. The Aks. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, brothers, yeah. I don't know. Remember I told you I blocked him? Like, Ooh. two years ago. Lil Nas X. I don't see anything the guy oh, does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I don't know if it is he's going to go through it with it. Um, because obviously the backlash that he's received off the back of doing this. Yeah. He apologised, don't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear people do stuff and then go and apologise. But I don't know why he's apologising because he does stuff about Christianity every single time. So again, it's just, that's why he's a kid. He used to be a barb. That's why I think that's also why I don't take him seriously. He literally used to be a Nicki Minaj stan that was doing all, all the way stands are. That was him. That's how this guy, like, he's just a stan that became famous. Doing music, talking about telling kids to ride down Old Town Road or wherever they were riding down. That's the idiot. So he's still got the mindset of of a stan. And stans are weird, respectfully, but they're weird. Do you get what I mean? So that's why I can't take him seriously because why is he apologizing? This is not the first time he's done anything about Christianity. It's probably the tenth time he's done that. He will randomly just say stuff, he randomly just tweet stuff, he randomly he does all these things again for shock value. Yeah, I feel like sometimes Christians, you need to save your blood pressure, man. Like, if, it's, if someone if someone intentionally tries to disrespect Christianity, I personally don't get the whole being offended about it and having sleepless nights over it and just putting out all that negative energy inside of me for someone that I know doesn't care about God and doesn't know God. It makes no sense to me. But that's just me personally. Hmm. Um, Danielle sent something, apparently during the transatlantic slave trade, there were still um, practices of slavery in the Islamic world. Yeah. Hmm. I made a mistake. I was thinking about something else prior to Islam. Yeah, the Arab slave trade came, came before the transatlantic, transatlantic slave trade. And it will happen for like a good 800 years. I think that um, Nas X has done a, a little deal with a little certain somebody. Do you know what's mad? <laughs> do you know what's so crazy? Yeah, he's such a loser. I don't even think he even had to do a deal. I feel like he's begging for a deal. I feel like all the things he does is him trying to audition and tell Satan, please, please let me be on team. Please. Yeah, I, think, I didn't think that. I think he answered the question that. after the first single, though. What's the question? What's the question? <laughs> the question that he was asking to, to come sit in, please. After that first single, because that <laughs> first single was <laughs> the first single was just country, right? Yeah, it was different. And then after that, he just went and Billy Ray Cyrus there. and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man. But that's just my theory. Obviously, I don't think I don't even think the, anyway. the devil is even checking for the boy. <laughs> Serious? <laughs> I, I really don't. Do you know what? Think about. Is it back, obvious that he is? Think back here to Swarms. When we watch that, yeah. right? Nicki Minaj stands are one of the most annoying, just the most annoying stands there are. Like, they're. All of the stands are annoying. Oh, yeah, but Nicki Minaj's ones? Oh, gosh. So think back to that. Like, this guy, all he, all he just wanted to do was get noticed. Get noticed, get noticed, get noticed. He's got a single now that's blown. Everything he does is for attention. He's still seeking the attention that he was seeking when he was a stan when he was 12 years old. I can't take him seriously. He's definitely auditioning for, the, for Lucifer. I don't think... Lucifer likes... Lucifer has um, what's it called taste, you know? Don't just go for any odd loser on the, street, on the high street. I don't agree with what you're saying. <laughs> that's right. You don't have to agree. This is, this is my theory. <laughs> Do you know he was... He was, he was... Wasn't he twerking on the devil? 
I want you to see that. This is normalizing these images to these little kids. It's not normalizing it. It's not. It's not. This is not. Lil Nas, Sam Smith, might mm. be normalizing things when he's on stages, on world stages, performing and whatever. Sam Smith may be normalizing things. Lil Nas X ain't normalizing nothing when every single time people are cussing you. No. He ain't normalizing nothing. But again, I don't rate the guy. So this is not an opinion I'm giving for like solidarity or for anyone else to agree to. This is my theory because I think he's a loser and he's just giving me loser vibes. I don't believe he's doing anything because anybody's putting him up to it or he's doing it for nothing other than I want attention. If this guy was to do what he did, if he had released that, whatever album, whatever it was that he released and he got zero attention, he would have deleted it and found something else. But that's the issue. And that's the issue with social media, period, is that people do something for shock value. You entertain them. And then now they try and reach back and da 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 If people just see stuff that offends them and just ignore it, don't engage with it, you'll be so surprised at how much things will change. But people actually literally do things for engagement, for, for attention. And that's what I see him doing. He's doing all of that for attention because there's no story that can actually tell of the relevance of doing Jesus and whatever. What, did you think he was Jesus or something? Or something? Mm. There's no story behind that album cover. There's nothing other than, mm, I want to piss Christians off and I'm gay. So let me do something that I know is going to get under their skin. If everybody ignored that man, that would be it. But no, people don't. And that's how the money, that's how the world goes around. So there we have it. Do, do you think that um, Christianity would be better off if they had the um, Islamic approach where it's like, even if it's a good thing, even if your intentions are good, we want no images of the prophet. So no images of, of Jesus, no films, people being depicted mm. up there. Yeah. If you want to talk about Christ, just have a plain cross, but no person depicted as Christ. I mean, so people good. set the standard and you know, listen, we don't want any of this nonsense. Even if your intentions are good, just across mm. the board banned. I think so, because you don't, you don't need to be, there's no reason for you to have a physical image of Jesus. Jesus mm. is God. God is the spirit. What are we doing here? Mm. So I think that would be a good that would be a good thing. There's literally no need for any of this. Okay. Ben, what do you think? Not to depict the image that is Jesus. Mm -hmm. De depicting something that is erroneous anyway. <laughs> yeah, but maybe that's part of the problem that causes, you know what I mean? That exacerbates the problem. Nah. I don't think that Christianity should follow in the path of um, Islam. I mean, the whole thing about Christianity is, is, is God's grace anyway. Mm -hmm. um, maybe if they should just focus on putting that message out so that people aren't questioning why it is that we aren't reacting to things in, man, in the manner in which it is that uh, Muslims would react to things. So you think more and more and more of the grace will make people understand certain things and maybe those who are doing nonsense will understand and maybe... Even if they don't understand, um, that is what we are asked to um, live by mm. and understand the overwhelming pouring of his grace is what dictates my um my reaction and mm. it should be the same for all christians god will handle what god wants to handle there's no way i'm going to be convinced that christians should, should stand up and start chopping off people's heads or look into bomb um buildings that mm -hmm. have depicted Jesus's face or this, that, and the next. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's not, not necessarily going out there to, to kill people. And obviously, I, I guess you may get to that point if somebody does it, right? But just having some sort of united front where it's like, cool, guys, we understand this is what's been happening, but we recognize this is not what, working. What I would be done for is, um, you know how countries like the US look to um, roll out sanctions? Mm -hmm. and cut off money mm. if you look to basically get together with institutions that would cut off money to whoever decides to do the standard x especially mm -hmm. if it's their a big platform mm -hmm. then that is the type of violence I'm <laughs> okay, okay. Mm. makes sense the the untouchable approach mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Hundred percent. laughs> all right cool um yeah, I don't know, man. I feel like we've kind of touched on everything there, pretty much, to be fair. Amen, man. Fun little Nas X. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right, let's move on from there. All right.
be an actual pest. I'm so happy I've never heard a single song of his, you know. Oh, You've heard Old Town, Old Town Road. Road. I promise you haven't. I promise you haven't. You would have heard it by accident. Nope. He has 100%. heard it. 100%. It's not. If it's played right now, in fact, I'm going to pause. No, I'm going to mute this and yeah. play it. And you're like, yep, I've heard it. It's not possible right, that try. you haven't heard that song. You have. I don't think I have. Like, don't it was, change. Don't change. It was a no, kid's no, honestly, I don't believe I have. Think, no. No, no, I don't, think, I don't think I have at all. Honestly. E-man. If, if, if you play it and I've heard it, I'll be like, okay, yeah. Okay. If you've watched TV... In the last it's not just few watching years, TV. it's not just watching TV. No, but an advert, something no, like he would have heard nah, the song. There was remixes on the kids' channels. Nah, they definitely was. Baby Shark and them, <laughs> all of them were doing remixes <laughs> <laughs> to this song. This guy was really infiltrated everywhere, isn't it? It's a oh. tune that I can't like because that Billy Ray Cyrus. Everyone likes Billy Ray Cyrus. He's a country singer. He's a legend. He's um Miley Cyrus's dad. dad. He's a whole legend. Mm. So he had him on there, mm. and I think when it's time moving mad, Billy Ray started to. Separate himself. Flip that's the tune. Do you remember the video when he went to surprise the kids in the in the school? They lost it. No. They absolutely I've never watched the video. It was so funny. This is of course when he was not full. But literally it was so cute, it was like a little um, school hall, like the lunch hall basically basically, and then they just started playing and then he came out. The kids like mm. sad to tell the girls were for Jada Wader. Oh, it was worse. Them little kids were like, oh my god, it was so funny. It was very cute. Very good song though. Ron? He's a fool now, so there's that. <laughs> All right, so our next headline. So an Italian junior culture minister has been accused of possessing and exhibiting a stolen 17th century painting, which he obviously denies, right? The latest allegations to hit a member of Italy's government center on Vittorio Scarbi, who's a renowned art critic. Mr. Scarby has been put under investigation for laundering stolen goods after including the painting in a 2021 exhibition. Uh, the painting is called The Capture of St. Saint, of Saint Peter, and it was reported stolen in 2013. The painting by Rutilio Manetti, who is a follower of the Baroque um, master Caravaggio, uh, used to be displayed in a castle in the northern Italian region of Piedmont. Mr. Scarby, who's also a TV personality known for his foul language <coughs> and several convictions for slander, is also accused of altering the painting by adding a candle to the top corner, allegedly to conceal its provenance. The politician says that he found the work while restoring a villa bought by his mother more than 20 years ago. He claims also that the painting is the original, while the one stolen in 2013 was a copy. Um, next headline, uh, Ukraine's military has shot down two of Russia's command planes in one of the most disastrous days for the Kremlin's air power um, since the start of Vladimir Putin's full-scale invasion. Uh, Ukraine's commander-in-chief said that his air force had destroyed a f- had destroyed an A-50 long-range uh, radar detection aircraft and an Il-22 um, control center plane. Both were flying above the sea of Azov on Sunday when they were hit about 9.10 p.m. local time. The A-50, which detects air defenses and coordinates targets for Russian jets, crashed instantly, killing its crew. And the badly um, damaged Il-22 um, appears to have made an emergency landing at an airfield in Anapa in Russia. It's unclear how Ukraine managed to target and shoot down the planes. One theory is that a Patriot anti-aircraft missile battery, which was supplied by the U.S., was used. 
This, however, would involve moving the system close to the front line, where it would obviously be detected. But Russian officials say that they have no information about what exactly happened. Pro-Kremlin bloggers suggested that the planes were hit by friendly fire or even shot down by a team of British SAS operatives using surface-to-air missiles. And our last headline takes us to the mighty nation of Nigeria, man. On the surface, yeah, Esther, mm. do you feel like Tinubu is doing a, a decent job? Um, I'm not sure, if I'm being honest with you. Because every time I see him, he's falling asleep, so I'm not sure. <laughs> he's, he's forever going to Every time I see him, he's always sleeping. Always. He's always taking a nap. As in, in meetings and... Mm. In the house of reps and wherever, he's just <laughs> napping. The reason why I'm asking you is because even though the headlines about Nigeria seem to always be kind of negative, mm. they also kind of include kinda. him <laughs> trying to do things to, to circumvent that. So, for instance, in this one here, right, the president, Bola Tinubu, has spent 3.4 billion naira oh, <laughs> on domestic and foreign travel since his first six months in office. So he's busy doing nothing. He's been traveling around. Six months. Know? Yeah, six on months. On holidays. Mm-hmm. Let's put this in context. So the spending means that the president and his team exceeded the 2.49 billion um, Naira travel budget allocated for the entirety of 2023 by 36%. He did this in six months, right? The budget for the year, he's done it in six months. Um, the Punch, obviously, um, which is the media outlet, they said that although the president inherited the budget halfway through 2023, he spent more than what was apportioned for the whole year between June and December of 2023. The reports, which have not been verified by the BBC. I don't know why we need the BBC to verify crap. Because anyway, he lies. Yep, so did Allegedly. the bloody BBC. <laughs> <laughs> and it comes nearly a week after President Tinubu capped. So this is what he's done. He's now capped the number of aides that are allowed to accompany him abroad. Just, oh, he's exceeded his... Something. He should not be travelling <laughs> the next six months. Not capping who's, who's allowed to come with him. Mm, that's, that is very true. Prior to, this funny. Move, <laughs> prior to this move, he had been criticised for incurring travel expenses that some Nigerians deemed to be excessive. Most notably, Mr. Tinubu came under fire after his government sponsored over 400 people to attend last year's COP28 climate conference in Dubai. Why are 400 people going there? Anyway, the privately run GovSpend um, portal um, collates official data from Nigeria's treasury. And this is the information that's come, up, come back with. But yeah, that's it for headlines. Time to pay the bills. Thank you very much. Let's get into some word and road. Okay, not much for me today. Um, the Emmys is going on, so it's all that excitement going on. But um, I did not know this person. I mean, I say this is wild. I have to say this, but this is, I guess, it's the life that's chosen me. I didn't know YG and Sweetie were in a relationship. Well, whatever relationship they were in, they've allegedly broken up. Um, so for anyone who cares, I thought she was... Obviously, she's not with Quavo, but I didn't think she was with anybody else outside of Quavo. And every time I see a picture of YG, he doesn't look how I think he looks. So every time I see him, I'm just shocked that that's who he looks like. And I don't know what image of the person I have in my head. But anyways, they're not together anymore. So that's that. Um, also, <laughs> this is funny. But basically, Rick Ross allegedly has welcomed a baby girl, right? But he hasn't posted about it. The baby's mother is the one who posted about it. But Rick Ross has a current girlfriend that is not the baby's mother. Mm. <laughs> no. It's a little <laughs> algebra over there. So anyway, so the baby's mother posted her child. And then someone in the comments says, congrats to you and Rick Ross. Rick Ross's new bundle of joy. And then she said, thank you. So obviously she's confirming that that is Rick Ross's offspring. Then his current girlfriend then posted a picture of the baby up, which is weird. But then when you put your baby on the internet, you lose control of what people can do with it. Then she said, oh, she's gorgeous. Then the baby's mum came back and said, it's giving strange danger because, baby, we don't know you. So play with somebody else for clout. Mm. All of this, we Cross has not said whether or not he has a child. But I just think it's funny how he's in a whole new relationship with somebody, but he's got a child that just dropped. But then the baby, anyway... A mess. Um, what's his name? Elton John is the 19th person to hold the EGOAT title. So he's got Emmy, well, he got an Emmy yesterday. So he's got Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and a Tony Awards. And he got the Emmy for his um his film on Disney Plus. Um, it's called Elton John Live, Farewell from Dodger Stadium. But he his partner basically accepted it on his behalf because he had um knee replacement surgery, so he wasn't there. 
I felt so cool. So I actually wanted to look up all the people that have had it. I talked about the guy, I think, was, was it Jennifer Hudson that got it last year? I think she did. But Whoopi Goldberg was actually the first black woman to ever get one, as in to get all four, which is amazing. And then John Legend as well has one. Yeah, Jennifer Hudson as well. Yeah, I talked about her in 2022. And then... The babe that is Viola Davis as well, which is amazing. And yeah, Elton John now, he's 19th. I think that's so cool, man. That's so lit. So there's that. And then also, um, Fern McCann. I remember her from TOWIE. I used to watch TOWIE back in the day. But basically, she did a exclusive with OK Magazine. And she was breastfeeding her child on the cover. And somehow, people have an issue with that. Which I think is just so wild, because isn't that a natural thing? But I guess this is part of the reasons why she did it. But when she posted it on her Instagram... She said, um, I'm so proud to have worked with OK on this shoot as an OK magazine. I wouldn't be the first to say this and I definitely wouldn't be the last. There's so much pressure on women to look and be a certain way, especially after giving birth. There's such a pressure to snap back to our pre-baby body. Like I say in the interview, there's no snapping back to anything. I'm focusing on snapping forward. OK, girl. Embracing whatever, the, whatever that looks like and what my body gives me. Speaking of what our body gives us, I loved doing this shoot and celebrating being a woman in a world where we are often objectified and sexualized, to do a cover, breastfeeding felt so empowering. Here's to all the mamas out there doing their thing and growing in confidence. Hashtag breastfeeding. I think it's lovely, man. This is what it looks like. And it needs to be normalized because, sorry, the baby's hungry. Wanting, what's it called, breastfeeding mothers to go and be hiding in the back room of the shed in the cold because you feel uncomfortable because you've sexualized breasts. Be FFR. So big up Fern, man. I really, I, I'm here for that. And the article looks very, very interesting as well. Talks about a lot of things. Talks about motherhood, breastfeeding, the body journey. Just a lot of stuff, man. And her and her fiance sleeping in separate beds and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, man. Do you think it's, it's really down to, um, or solely down to, like, people just sexualizing breast stuff? Yeah. You don't think it's also because, like, some women themselves just think, you know what, it's a private thing. I don't want people to see me, da, 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 this, that, and the third. Yeah, but women's ideas of things that are, quote unquote, women's ideas of a lot of things mm. are inherited from the, from the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not status. From basically what was set before them, for their time. Mm. A lot of things that women think mm -hmm. is not because women have come up with it, it's because women have been socialized to think that. The baby is hungry. Yeah, I know, I know. But but a lot of women would either be like, oh, I'm coming back and then go somewhere in private. Yeah, that's fine. You know what I mean? But then a woman who doesn't want to go, I'm coming back and just mm. wants to pop her breast out and feed a baby, shouldn't be chastised for that. Mm. And I think that's the problem. So because some people don't want to, because it's like with clothes. Some people are comfortable wearing short skirts. Some people aren't. Mm. But then just because you're not comfortable wearing short skirts doesn't mean the person that's wearing short skirts should then be made uncomfortable. So it's one of those things where if you want to do it, then do it. Because mm -hmm. it's all part of the body positivity. Body positivity isn't just about one thing. Same with sexual po positivity. It's not just about one thing being right. It's it's giving room for anybody to exist in whatever way they want they want to. So yeah, there are women who would not want to and whatnot. Mm. And that's fine. I don't know that that's something that I would... I don't know what my situation would be. But that's fine. But then if a woman does decide that that's what she wants to do, she shouldn't be given dirty looks or mm. made to feel away because she wants to feed her child. I think people are just still shocked because as much as more and more people do it now, it's still not commonplace. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, but when people get shocked, I'm like, do you watch porn or not? No, but it's not, it's not like the same. Though. It's still like, you just don't expect. The Even baby's if, being, it's, it's child being fed. I feel like that in itself mm. is why it's not like, it's not a shocking thing. Mm. Because you can see the reason why the titty's out is to feed the baby that was crying a second ago that you were annoyed at the baby crying. I can't win, man. How do you feel I, about I, I, women breastfeeding in public? Say like it. In is a, that what we're talking about? In a restaurant <laughs> and thing. I'm saying you don't mind it. No. The no. baby's hungry. What if it's just next to you? I don't. I, I, to I literally do not care. And the breast is out. Don't care. I've seen breasts in worse situations. I don't care. What if milk splashed on your plate? The milk will not splash on my plate because it's not a tap. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. The whole suction situation that has to go on <laughs> when that's happened. I'm here for it, man. you got to do what it is that whatever you're comfortable doing. But I don't mm. think it's nice that when people do that, people kind of give them dirty looks. It's like, kind of, it's like if you're in public sometimes, well, if a baby's crying, mm -hmm. people start looking at the mum as if she activated the tears. Mm. And I just think stuff like that like, is just unnecessary. 
So I'm here for the, that conversation, like those conversations happening. You see what you just mentioned there, though, yeah. Yeah, about people kind of looking at the mum in some type of way if the baby's yeah. just crying. Yeah. Is it that similar sort of look when they see somebody breastfeeding? And not that it's some other... No, no it's a judgmental look. It yeah. looks the same across all races. It looks the same. It's just, it's just a judgmental look. Because the baby is crying, they're looking at you like, oh, can't you cry your baby down? Or mm -hmm. oh, so annoying. And oh, oh. Every time, you know, British people love that. But I guess with that, yeah, with the breastfeeding, there's still the same judgmental look. And it's like, okay. Yeah. Still a lot of tutting and whatnot. Big up with the mums, man, that be breastfeeding and the ones that don't want to breastfeed either. There's a lactating um, tab on these porn sites, just so you know. Oh, what, you can, find, you can find breast milk on there? You say you've done market research, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> of course there would be. Goodness me. But anyway, big up all the women, man. It's not easy. And there, she does actually mention in an article as well that she's aware that not every woman can breastfeed because there's many reasons why people can't breastfeed as well. Um, I think it's a good article. I feel like if your mom want to be a mom or anything like that, it is something very interesting to read and it's empowering, to be honest. Why is Ed... Just answer this question, please, um, Esther, since we're on mm -hmm. the topic. You yeah. wouldn't be comfortable watching a brother take a leak in a bush next to you. It's the same exact thing. He it's said that. It's a natural act, but people are orcs with nudity. That's how society is. What do you guys think about that? Do you Who think said it's that? Um, comparable? Who said that? Um, a, a fella called Ed. Do you think it's comparable, fellas? Ed is an egg. No. How, how is peeing in public, making up the whole roads and the, the place stink up? <laughs> The same as getting a, get, getting a breast out to feed a child. The purpose of getting the body part out is to feed a child. Purpose of you getting your willy out is lack of bladder control to get home and go use the toilet. What's yeah, these are too westernized, man. <laughs> no, that's what it is. That's what it is. And these are just letting these are doing what they do with the Bible, trying to change for this day and age, yeah. and just move like this is the naturalist thing in the world. Back home, there's girls walking around with their breast out now. And they ain't even got babies. Did you actually? Okay. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I think that's what so, he was gaming. Right? <laughs> I thought nah. you meant people just breastfeed. No, but I'm generally just saying... out, like out, because they do that actually. Mm. You should be able to feed your baby anywhere on the bus, of course, Oxford Street, theatre. Yeah, but Ed is saying you should be able to feed the grass with your piss whenever you want. <laughs> <laughs> that's illegal. Kind of exactly. First of all, that's a public your public nuisance. That's nudity. I said we've got a problem with nudity. So we, no, that's not something we need to take up and start sorting out. Yeah, I don't think they're comparable. They're not the same. It's, it's, it's definitely a very poor analogy. And it's easy, it's easy <laughs> to say, oh, some women don't want to get their breasts out in public. But if the, the baby's thing. hungry, the baby's mm -hmm. hungry. Bro. Do you think it's the same as this though? Like maybe just like someone like us maybe eating on the bus. I think you and Ed are in the same boat. No, no, no. Do, do, you are. We're definitely not. Do you know why? You are. The reason why I'm asking You're not a baby. No, no, no. I'll, I'll tell you why. Because I feel like in certain places... You can eat on the bus. Like, nobody will say anything. Mm -hmm. But I think people would say certain places are just not appropriate. You know what I'm saying? Like, we would prefer for it to not occur here. That's basically what I'm trying to say. No, it's not the same thing because I, when I... A baby is mm. defenseless yeah. and is doesn't take care of themselves and is looking somebody else to provide for them. As an adult, you've already provided food for yourself. You can wait till you get home if you want to. If you don't care about germs, you absolutely can't eat on the bus. What, what about it's if it was not like the same a, comparison? What if it was like a five year old? Where, where where does it kind of stop? Would you say five year old? Okay, you know what? Cool. Let's wait till you get home before I give you the pet lunch. Or would you yeah. say okay on the bus? It's fine. You're hungry. You're There's young. a kid. I would You're talking about breastfeeding. Yeah, a five year old. No, no, no. Sorry. Talk no. about eating food. No, that's not feeding the baby. That's <laughs> letting the baby suck your breast. That's not... stop, stop judging, please. <laughs> on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> what? You better save that for your yard. Get get a room, perverse. Get a room. It's killing me. Yo, when I, when I was working, well, I'm not, I'll never forget. I was working at the council, yeah. And there's a woman in front of me, right? And she had a kid with her. And I promise you, I'm pretty sure this kid was standing up <laughs> <laughs> because I was chatting to her. And I'm, the guy was just making noise, isn't it? And she just was like, <laughs> just, you know, the quick. <laughs> and the guy just went for it. He was standing up. Yeah, but you, you, kidding me? you can get toddlers standing up. You're just kidding me. The fact yeah, that he's a so. guy, yeah. Because <laughs> he was grown up. There's no reason why he should be doing that. So if I have the same sentiment for kids when I see them in strollers and their, their feet dragging on the floor and the mom has to tell them, pick your feet up. You can walk then. You can walk. What are you doing? Oh, man. Um, what was it Finan said? 
So about if yeah, he... Fernand agreed with um, Ed. Yeah, but he did. That's the ick. You people just p- pissing in bushes. <laughs> that was just nasty. That's absolutely. They have some decorum. That's disgusting. Can women do that then? What? The, that, the, yeah, the bush. Yeah, in the bush. I mean, the body part. <laughs> Ask Fernand and Ed since they know they've got the degrees and whatnot. <laughs> Can women do that then? Is yeah, that okay? I, I believe that a lot of people would love the women freeing everything up, to be honest, as Marx was suggesting. You think, man, that's not a thing for men. They don't want to see Gad squatting and pissing in the street. But well, she doesn't have to squat. What? <laughs> of course, she's gonna so go over it. That's just gonna ain't gonna go over it. Good aiming. Okay. You gotta do a little bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna say anyone pisses in public. I'm sorry. No, that's something that you do when you're a kid. Because you know how kids are. The kids tell you they need the toilet right now as they need it. So mm. that's fair. But as a grown man, I'm not really trying to. See. There's so many shops around the place like that. Would you could just go in. <laughs> Heck, buy, buy something and go in the toilet. Mm. Buy oh, your pissing on the place. That's why the streets, some streets stink. Mm, yeah, nasty. my favorite um YouTube channel. Um, they went to Ethiopia and they went to the tribes, different tribes. Oh. Okay, and I was thinking, where's this going, Brent? Yeah. They were walking around um, um, like naked and they got beads around their necks and stuff. Oh yeah, just breast oh, out. Oh yeah, just this is what I'm saying. Just, just and, they, and cool. other places in South Africa. Do dancing and stuff, on it. Didn't Kay say he went somewhere where that was their... Yeah. Yeah, and that's how they live. Yeah. This, That'd this, be lit. This is how we're supposed to live. Breasts yeah. are supposed to be out of door. They're not sexualized. It's they're it's they're not sexualized, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if it is. You could just implement that. Mindset. Yeah, just tomorrow. Like I feel like you would. I feel like you were there, you know. A particular Do you sunbathe topless? No. But you're just promoting it, just championing the naturalist, the, tra- yeah, the naturalist. You've got to live in your truth, live in the life. I don't have to live in nothing that I don't want to live in. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but I am pro natural because that's that's their culture. If I went mm. to a country that like, I would actually like to live in a live in a society like that. But my situation is always a toilet situation. I can't be going in the hole in the ground. That's crazy. But <laughs> would if you I ever sunbathe would... topless? Yeah, I would. What does what? But I stay in hotels when I go, so I'm not about to have. That man and his mm. wife invite me for a threesome later. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm good, love. Nah. Yeah, but I would. I actually would. I'd love to walk around naked. Just in my natural state. How God created me. People, so people that have a problem a with suit. breastfeeding in public, do they have a problem with women sunbathing topless? Probably don't. The nah, deviants. probably definitely not. Ain't that the same kind of thing? No. Nah. You would think so, but the reason why they don't if like If you've got women... an issue with a woman breastfeeding... Mm-hmm. And that's a function. That's an, that's a necessity mm-hmm. yeah. for life to to, to to happen, to happen and thrive and thing. You would have an issue with somebody backing their tits out just so they don't have tan tan lines mm-hmm. on their nipples. But they wouldn't, though, because the reason why they have an issue with the woman who's breastfeeding a child is because they see breasts as a sexual thing. Mm. So that makes them uncomfortable. So if if a woman's just got her breast out, not breastfeeding a child, they're happy to see that because they're seeing that in oh, what their natural. mind has said it's for if that makes sense okay okay because really breast is for the kids i mean it's mm. debatable yeah it's debatable to be fair breast for daddy okay <laughs> <laughs> disgusting. you said that's disgusting just the way you said it, it was just mm. <laughs> that's enough to make a girl celebrate <laughs> <laughs> dried right up right up but yeah man make up all the breastfeeding women and the non-breastfeeding women as well yeah, that's it. Let's get into people's journal. The ones that don't have any breasts. Or everybody. Hopefully or they, breast matter. Hopefully they got hips and thighs. Okay. And no hips. Pick a up. struggle. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> that was the first thing you should have thought about. Shit. This right. <laughs> <laughs> Just. Anyways. All right, so <laughs> welcome to the People's Journal. I'll give you the news from an economics point of view. So the first thing I want to talk about is the strikes. Yeah? Mm-mm-mm. So remember, obviously, the strikes were called off the other day. But anyway, long story short, there's some fresh strikes that are going to be coming through, man. So ASLEF, which is one of the main train driver unions, right? Um, they've got a long-running dispute with, like, 12 different train companies. And long story short, there's going to be strikes between Tuesday the 30th of January and Monday the 5th of February, right? This will affect different operators each of those days. So please, guys, do your due diligence 
and actually figure out if it's going to affect your journey. So on the, on the Tuesday the 30th anyway, it's pretty much going to be Southeastern, Southern, Gatwick Express, Great Northern, Thameslink, Southwestern Railway and SWR Island Line, right? On the Wednesday, on the 31st of Jan, it's going to be Northern Trains and Transpennine or Transpennine Express. On the Friday, the 2nd of February, it's going to be Great Anglia, C2C and the LNER um, line as well. Uh, the Saturday, the 3rd of February, so on the weekend, it's, it's, it's going to be affected, right? Uh, West Midlands Trains, Avanti West Coast and East Midlands Railway. And on the Monday, the 5th of February, the last day, it's going to be Great Western, Cross Country and Chilton. I don't believe them until I see it actually happen. What the strikes? After the, the last stunt they pulled. <laughs> Ruined everybody's week. That was, that was more so TFL though. So none of these include TFL. Okay. So I, I think those guys are still kind of happy to sit, you know, to talk at the table and whatnot. Mm. But um, obviously the rest, um, they want to sort something out for their members as well. Um, next thing I wanted to mention, uh, there isn't much, much to mention today, by the way. Um, the other day I mentioned how, I think it was Iceland, was it Iceland who I was saying have reduced the price of their baby formulas? Aptimil? It was last week. No. Anyway, long story short, other supermarkets have jumped in as well. So Asda and Tesco have also joined um, Iceland in reducing the cost of Aptimil. <clears throat> um, as I said, um, they're going to be letting their customers pay for baby formula using their reward scheme vouchers for the first time. So prior to this, you couldn't use your reward scheme vouchers um, as it does to actually get your Aptimil. But now you can, right? Um, the CMA, which is the Competition and Markets Authority, um, they did an investigation into formula products um, because of the fears that they were um, particularly vulnerable to price shocks, right? And obviously that's going to affect everybody. Everyone's got kids. And we're just literally just chatting about how people are breastfeeding and, you know, need to feed their kids in certain mm -hmm. places and things of that nature. And obviously, as we all know, not every woman can breastfeed. Yep. Or plus, you just get to a certain point after six months where you don't want to breastfeed. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, and Aptomel was one of the most popular ones. Um, and... Um, higher quality as well compared to the others, isn't it? Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something that's going to be welcomed by a lot of people. Um, you know what I mean? Who, who rely on Aptimum. But yeah, like I said last week, Iceland um, jumped on, said they're going to be cutting their costs, and now um, Asda and Tesco have also done the same. And the last thing I wanted to mention, and <laughs> this is what Brett was talking about um, earlier when he men made mention about sending um, certain topics to me. Um, big up Femi, Femi for sending this through, and this is basically about. A Nigerian businessman. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, did you guys hear about uh, the businessman who tried to buy Sheffield United? Mm -hmm. It was the end of last year. African man? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so he he was quite close <laughs> to doing the whole takeover of Sheffield United. Long story short, he's being sued right, by the US financial watchdog, the SEC. Um, basically for fraud, man. Oh. Mm -hmm. Basically. Right, it's, it's, it. Yeah, it, it seems like he was... You guys heard about um, the Nigerian guy who tried to sell an airport to somebody? Yeah, they sure did. And the airport didn't exist. It's not even like the airport was there like Gatwick, you know. It didn't exist. Go I there. it was a Nigerian just... airport he tried to sell. It might have been. Yeah, I think he tried to sell the Niger... Nigerian airport. Rubbishes. He got close. No, in fact, I think, did he succeed? I think he might have even succeeded, you know. No, I don't think he did. No, he, but then he got caught. we wouldn't know about him. Actually, we wouldn't know about him. I, I wonder if like he got caught. He, he succeeded in, um, what do you call it? but then got caught afterwards. But anyway, this guy, I think this might be a similar situation um, to um, the allegations that Donald Trump's getting called up for, where he basically is inflating his company's financial performance, right? And he's done it apparently by hundreds of millions of dollars, right? And this is to defraud the investors. So he's amplified his company so that they got more, um, they're more profitable than they are, they're more um, cash, cash rich than they are. And actually the reality is it wasn't. And because of that, he was able to, do certain deals and able to try and bring in more investors and they're able to try and actually buy Sheffield United. Long story short, um, he's been charged. That's that's the long short of it. He's mm -hmm. been charged uh, with securities fraud. And the SEC are on to him, man. So it's not looking good for this Nigerian man. So <laughs> The EFCC? SEC. Oh. Yeah. It's a, an American uh, watchdog. Oh, yeah. They're definitely going to get his ass. Mm -hmm. Securities and Exchange Commission. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much it for the People's Journal, man. All right. So one of my favorite segments is getting to asking for a friend. <coughs> Delete. Okay. okay. The email just came through. Okay, cool. All right. So asking for a friend. Hi, team. Love the show. Daily listener on Spotify here. 
Just a quick one. Someone I love deeply keeps on bringing up my most painful moments or flaws I share with them when we argue. They apologise when things calm down, but when there is another fierce argument, they go for the most cutting thing. I really believe they are sorry when they apologise, so I don't hold it on. I don't hold on to it. Outside of these arguments, everything is great. I'm conflicted about. Sorry, I'm conflicted because I consume a lot of therapy content online and on podcasts, and all the signs point to me cutting this person out of my life. I love to hear your thoughts on this because my friends are 60, 40 on this. Mm. Cut them off. <laughs> Cut them off. <laughs> Cut them off. If someone keeps, yeah, if someone knows that something hurts you and they bring it up one time, that's fair because you can let them know that this is something that hurts me. But if every single time you guys have an argument, a disagreement or whatever it is, and they try to hurt you by bringing up things that they know is a trigger for you or things that they know has harmed you or caused you pain, that is not somebody that you want in your life. It doesn't matter if they're nice to you 364 days out of the year and the one day they do that, that's not someone whose spirit is kind towards you. So mm. what I will be doing, I personally will be cutting them off. That is my advice to you. There's not even nothing to consider, in my opinion. Cut them off. I'm, I'm kind of interested to know the people who are kind of... It was interested in things. <laughs> <laughs> it was in, always interested in things. No, because I'm, uh, yeah. I'm on your side. I'm trying to figure out um, why the friends who are for keeping her around want her to still be around. You might have some oh, okay. you you know might have money or something. There might be something there, man. First of all, we don't know it's a man. Hmm? You say he might have money. Yeah. We don't know it's a guy. What would she say? So it's uh, someone they deeply love. Yeah, mm. If she was the we same family sex, member. she would have used a like, partner or something like that. Mm. I think because so, sometimes people make excuses for people. And maybe they are that person. Maybe the, the people that are not pro you cutting them off. You know, people would do the whole, oh, give them a, another chance. They don't really mean it. Maybe people say stuff in argument. They don't really mean it. Story. Yeah. That's an open and shut case for me. That's easy. Honestly. Mm. Just cut them out. You can't keep cut them hurting me. Unless you like being a punching bag. It sounds, it. It sounds like you're a glutton for punishment. Yeah, this is not right, man. <laughs> it does. <laughs> you keep going back. This is people talk nonsense to you. I don't even communicate with people that like that. Yeah, I can't do it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm on a one strike it out. Because I think it speaks to who you are when you do something like that. So I'm not, I'm not even sitting down here to find out whether we do it a second time or third time. I think yeah, that's wild. Yeah. One strike it out is best way right. to go. I'm not even giving you two strikes. If I nah. give you two strikes, you're, you're done. Like one strike and you're out. I might can forget when I see you in the club nine months later. Mm. And you know what I'm trying to say? Like, <laughs> yeah, we can be and, and we we can rekindle and go again on a one strike out. If I give you two, if I give you one strike and, I, and then you make me think and I give you two strikes and you take them two, you're finished. Honey. Forget the third strike thing. Because <laughs> you made me go against everything I stand for mm. anyway. For one, you know? Did you get what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. Yeah, nah. I don't communicate with humans like that, man. If you can just say anything you want to me because you're angry. Nah, fuck, yeah. fuck all that shit. That's long. You'll regret that, but yeah, I don't I'm, I'm that stubborn game. enough to make you regret it as well. Mm. Yeah, that's where the ignorance and my pettiness kicks in. Talk about turning over cheek. No, nah, it's eye for an eye. Okay. <laughs> 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 I to- totally agree with you guys. But what if right, yeah. this friend had been um, there for for her during like the toughest toughest moments at a certain time when they feel like you know what. Everyone yeah, everybody left else. me, da, 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 you know what I'm saying? And this is why they may be allowed this, only this person mm. to basically get away with certain things like this. For totally. me, that's not an excuse. I think mm. just because you're, that like, you don't get to hurt me, you don't get to bank pain that you're going to inflict on me because you're there for me when I need you. Mm-hmm. Well, everyone can take what they can take, yeah. innit? If the juice is worth the squeeze, then your situation is different, innit? If you feel like it's worth putting up with that crap because you get more that's true, that's true. from from the other way, then that's a decision that only mm-hmm. only you can make. You yeah. know what I'm trying to say, like. So when you do your pros and cons, if it balances it out, then fair All enough. The but you got to ask yourself exactly what you're getting from the situation, and if it's mm-hmm. worth putting up with that crap, if that's how it's mm-hmm. making you feel, whatever the reasons mm-hmm. it, that you're putting up with it for, if they make sense in your mind, then it doesn't really matter. Mm. Also, just to note, yeah, when people get comfortable speaking to you a certain way in private, that will manifest itself publicly. Mm. So, you might be able to. It might be worth. Why is the juice worth the squeeze and whatnot in private? Mm. But at some point in mixed company, your your shoes gonna be brought up. Mm-hmm. You have to firm that too because you enabled it. I mean, you don't have to. You can always cut people off anyway. Any point in life, but yeah, my yeah, my advice is just to let that go, man. Yeah, I don't like spiteful, vindictive people. Oh, man, yeah, no. man. And the fact that 
you only express how you feel when you're angry. That's deep. I no, can't do that. I, can't, I don't like that. That's come from a place of spite, hate. Yeah. That's been weighing heavy on That's your been heart. Wait, you've been waiting yeah. to, to been get waiting to use to this. Lick me with this. Yeah, oh, you're honey, too you gotta go. I don't need. I don't need humans like you in my life, man. Yeah, that's scary. I mean, people like that can kill you. That's scary. Mm. You've got nothing to lose. Unless you like toxic love, then do your thing. You can't love it that much if you're writing to us. That's true. And that's the thing. I, like when I'm reading this again, it just sounds like you know what you need to do, man. Yeah, but well, you know sometimes you like you sometimes you know what you need to do. Yeah. But you just need someone else to mm -hmm. validate what it is that you need to do. The fact that you were even talking to your friends about it, you already knew what you needed to do. She probably but did now whip. we've told you and you listen to us every single day so now mm. we've told you I think she's whipped I reckon he hit the bottom of her boom boom and she just lost her mind you know not everybody can reach the bottom that's <laughs> 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 just it's above me <laughs> <sighs> yeah man don't be dignitized it's a fraud it's a scam it's a scam yeah being dignitized is a scam it's attachment issues <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I personally think that's what it is that you should do um, and we wish you the best with that sorry random have you Gosh. ever been with a new person but you oh. love your old person <laughs> what but you love your old person oh no okay <laughs> so that's a lie I think I probably have <laughs> <laughs> No, I have. Yeah, I do. I have. What do you do in them situations? No, but I know what. Like, okay, so with myself here, when I if I date somebody because I date people intentionally, right? Mm. I know I need to give myself detox time away from the person. Heal, you know, help me. I'm pro therapy, all that kind of stuff, right? Mm. But so in that situation is when I've when I've jumped into something else to help me to distract me from the other thing I need to be getting away from. So most times it's not something that I rate or want a lot from anyway. Okay. So it's not, do you get me? It's not, it's not something with substance. Okay, fair play. Do you get me? Yeah. That's right. But yeah, it's not a healthy way. Just curious. You will carry last. <laughs> and you're dealing with two heartbreaks. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing's worse than dealing with heartbreak from someone you didn't even like in the first place. Gosh, the ghetto. Anyways, um, if you guys want to send your dilemmas in for asking for a friend, sis, what would you do? <laughs> The number is 075-6484-1073. Or if you want to email, the email address is thedayafter at thenewblack.com. Let us know if it's for asking for a friend, assist, what would you do? And all that great stuff. You're also welcome to send voice notes in if you would like to do that. But yeah. Let's... So can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Of course you can. Um, this um, just goes back to the Nigerian guy that I was talking about trying to buy Sheffield United. <laughs> the airport. Because <clears throat> I just read something in the article, yeah. Yeah. This guy created fake bank statements and forged supporting documents uh, to give the impression that his company, Tingo Mobile, right, was a thriving business worth than $1 billion, mm -hmm. right? How much money do you think he had in his bank account? Is it in pounds or naira? Dollars. Dollars, okay. I think I like $312. Okay. Why do you think that much? That or much? That, that little, that little, I should say. Because only a brick. Actually, no. I say buying break, Sheffield but... United. That's, 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 that's... Oh, I thought you meant the guy was trying to buy the Nigerian airport. No, no, no. no oh, that guy. So this guy. Oh, the Sheffield guy. Sheffield United. How yeah. much was he putting up for the Sheffield? Uh, I'm not too sure. I but, feel like he's. But his company was valued at almost one billion dollars. <throat> yeah, I feel like he's already got like 150 million in his account. Okay, okay. Brent Marks. That you've asked the question, <laughs> I know it's going to be low. Fifty dollars. I don't think it's that. What? Low. That's worse than my three hundred and twelve. I'd say maybe less than a million. Okay. Okay. What did I Mark, say? you said fifty. Mm. Nope. But you are the closest. No. What did he have? Fifteen. A million. Fif no dollars. Fifteen. Fifteen dollars. <laughs> Fifteen dollars. Yeah. So when I said three hundred and twelve, <laughs> I was trying to throw you off a bit. <laughs> That's why I went low when he said, why you say so much? That's why I said something lower. 15. Yeah, this is according, this is according to The Guardian. That wouldn't even get yeah. him a cheeky flipping Popeyes. It's ridiculous. $15. But... <clears throat> Very aspirational, man. Only Nigeria, though. Of course. Only. 100%. That kind of audacity only comes in Nigerian spirit. Hmm. 
Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. But if he managed to get away with it, wouldn't you praise him? 100%. Especially if it is that he now takes Sheffield United to the Premier League. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Right. So you can't way. investigate the guy. In football land, don't you need the money to clear? So was he trying to sell Sheffield or did he, was he trying to buy Sheffield? Buy Sheffield. So wouldn't they need a check to clear? But I think what he was doing... It seems anyway, it's like inflating the company to get investors on board. So you know how Elon Musk, for example, uh, bought Twitter? It's mm-hmm. not it's not his own personal money, is it? It's it's a lot of investors who are kind of backing him, uh, that that sort of thing. So then people will get involved, you know what I mean? And yeah. Oh yeah, you could have gone away with that then. If your company's valued at one sorry, one billion. Yeah, 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 you could have mm-hmm. gone away with that. Yeah. That's a shame. Crazy. But anyway. All right, let's get into our next headlines. <laughs> About 10, okay. 10, 15 minutes ago. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> so, our next headline, right? Yeah, you got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Some sad news, but, uh, but this happened in Iceland, where a volcano erupted right. in southwest Iceland with molten lava flows reaching the outskirts of a small fishing town, setting some of the houses alight. So the town was evacuated just hours before um, so no people were actually in danger. However, infrastructure may be under threat as buildings were consumed by lava. Iceland is home to more than 30 active volcanoes, making it a prime destination for volcano tourism. But this has been the second eruption in less than one month and the fifth outbreak since 2021. The president said that the country faces a daunting period as it battles tremendous forces of nature in the town. Next headline, also some sad news, man. And a plane has crashed into the Pacific Ocean near an airport south of San Francisco. So, how can I pluralize bloody San Francisco? Right. <laughs> Crews are searching for the plane um, that went down in Half Moon Bay at 7.15 p.m. local time on Sunday. Witnesses told ABC7 News that they heard the aircraft's engine sputtering before it came down. They figured something was wrong as it was so close to the restaurant that they were eating at. Police have also said that they found a wreckage in the water and first responders are now searching for any survivors. There's no immediate information about the number of people on board the plane or the type of aircraft involved in the crash. And our last headline, big trigger warning here. And a man who nearly beheaded a 19-year-old student when he stabbed her to death has been locked up indefinitely. Samahe Maruf, who's 24, he stabbed uh, Sabita Tanwani in the neck at her student accommodation in March of 2022 and unfortunately she died at the scene. Maruf pleaded guilty to manslaughter by means of diminished responsibility saying that he was suffering from a schizoaffective disorder. He also pleaded guilty to assault when he headbutted a police officer trying to arrest him. On Monday the judge sentenced him at the Old Bailey to a hospital order without limit of time. Ms Tanwani's family paid tribute to her describing her as an angel who was pure and did not see bad in anyone. So sad that people just come around and spoil other families' lives, man. Just ruin everything. It's all animals, man. But yeah. That's it for the headlines, guys. Time to pay the bills. All right, let's get into the reaction. <clears throat> Welcome to the reaction, people, where I read out your sports headlines so our first headline of the day is well actually we still got african nations right mm-hmm. did we find an african correspondent yet yes tijoke is gonna call him all right then tell okay whenever whenever you whenever you're ready killy you let us know while gone it's already started already who the afghan yeah 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 so I've got here, Everton and Nottingham Forest are charged with breaching Premier League profitability and sustainability rules. Everton and Nottingham Forest have been charged with breaching Premier League profitability and sustainability rules. And the Premier League clubs are permitted to lose a maximum of $105 million over three seasons, um, $35 million a season, um, due to Forest spending two seasons in the Championship within the latest assessment period. The maximum loss they were permitted was $61 million. The Premier League um, says both clubs have confirmed they are in the breach of the rules for the assessment period ending season 2022-2023. The cases have now been referred to the chair of the judicial panel, 
who will appoint separate independent commissions to determine the appropriate sanction. Punishments could include a fine, points deduction, or other sporting sanctions. Um, our next headline. Uh, the winner of Anthony Joshua's fight with Francis and, and Garnu could challenge the victor of Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. Um, undisputed heavyweight title clash later this year. Two-time heavyweight world champion Joshua on Monday had his bout with former UFC heavyweight champion Nganu confirmed for March the 8th in Saudi Arabia, three weeks after WBO, IBF and WBA belt holder Usyk takes WCBC title Fury, um, takes on WBC titleist Fury in Riyadh. Uh, most had expected that the undisputed clash would be followed by a rematch, but at Monday, Joshua and Garnu's press conference in London, it was suggested the winners of the two fights could be matched next. Um, and our last sports headline, um, says, Argentina forward Lionel Messi has won the Men's Player of the Year at the FIFA Best Awards. Um, with Manchester, Manchester City manager Pep Guardiola came in, claiming the Men's Coach Prize in London. In the Miami's Messi edged out City striker Erling Haaland with Paris Saint-Germain's attacker Kylian Mbappe third. City's Edison collected the goalkeeper award of, um, of Real Madrid's Thibaut Quartar and Al Hilal's Yassin Bernal. England manager Serena Wagman was named Coach of the Year and Mary Earp's best goalkeeper for the second successive year at the FIFA Best Awards. Spain and Barcelona midfielder Atana Bonmati was named Women's Player of the Year, adding to her Women's Ballon d'Or and UEFA Women's Player of the Season accolades. Oh yeah, she was cooking. She was absolutely cooking. And if our um, correspondent doesn't want to call us, just to let you know, um, the, the games took place. Senegal beat Gambia 3-0. Cameroon and Guinea drew 1-0. And Algeria and Angola drew 1-0. I can't tell you anything about the games, but I'm sure they was thrilling and exciting prospects. The AFCON correspondent instead suggested we talk about Jose Mourinho getting sacked. Ah, I actually just saw that, actually. When did that news break? Just now? Yeah. What's that? Another third season syndrome? Mm. Is that what it is? Apparently he's going to Chelsea now. No chance. What, what, what did he call Wenger before? About something about Specialist in failure. Yeah, nice one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boy, Mourinho's sick. He literally don't do more than three seasons anywhere, innit? That's mad. Is he worth taking by someone? Sheffield, like, is the Sheffield, free Sheffield United. Hmm? Sheffield United. <laughs> <laughs> to say, yeah, yeah, I'll get two seasons out of Mourinho. I might do well in the cup somewhere. If the team's strong enough, could probably challenge. But he get he don't get a top team ever again, does he? I think he does. You think he does? Yeah. United. Who? A return to United. No, they would have taken him back. They, they would have taken him back. They didn't like him. He's had his thing though. But the football wasn't necessarily amazing. So, fair play to him. When he told you he's not finishing second with United was his best, his best, his biggest achievement in football. He's not thought he was bad or anything, man. Looking to take a look under the hood, he'd let you know really how bad it is out there. You get what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, it's tough. But um, I reckon he can get another top team. After all, he's Mourinho, man. Mid table, Roma level. Because top team where he's not getting a top team in Spain. He's not getting a top team in Germany. Would Dortmund take him? I don't know. He's not getting a... He had Roma in Italy. If he came back to England, he would be... Spurs wouldn't take him right now. United wouldn't take him. Arsenal wouldn't take him. Chelsea ain't taking him. Villa wouldn't take him. Brighton wouldn't take him. You know, I can bet that you would see some Arsenal fans talking about Mourinho. Coming to Arsenal and replacing Arteta. Even some of your brethren's. Yeah, I'll take Mourinho. Do you think he could take you to the next level? No. Oh, no, you're not, there's nothing Arteta's there. Arteta's going to take us to the next level. Oh, you think you're going to win something with Arteta? 100%. Okay, yeah, okay. It's my belief. Okay. You'd have more chance to win the league with Mourinho. <laughs> <laughs> So you still think he has the pedigree to basically um, take a top team then? That's what he, you said. If he's, if he's got the players. I don't know whether they would give him the job, but if he's got the players. Do you think that with our players that he would have won the league? 
No, but with your players and a, and a so proper... So nobody would have basically won us that league. That's so not, why are we blaming Ateta? I'm not blaming Ateta. I told you that one isn't um, a title winning squad. Arsenal with your team, how it is constructed now. No, it can't be constructed how it is now. Arsenal with Mourinho and a proper number nine. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Could win this league. Same with Ateta at the helm. Yeah. Because you've just, you've just pointed out what it is that everybody believes that we are we are lacking. Hmm. Okay. I don't know why I'm trying to steal Mourinho's panda. I don't know how to go about Arteta anyway. Because the AFCON correspondent said that we should focus on that instead of what we've asked him to focus on. Is he trying to like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if he watched the games yesterday. Okay, he's saying work. Yep, that's it. <laughs> nah, man. Come on, man. This is your first day on the job. This is what you're doing. Did you see anything about the games? Can you told me something about the lineups, the star you players. You know, forgot until we go into reaction and, you, and Brent said his name. <laughs> 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 And now he's like, damn, I shouldn't have been in the chat all day. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you got one more chance, man. Actually, no, you ain't got one more chance. I'll give you to the end of the week. Pull your finger out. Mm. Come on, man. But Come on, man. That's the end of our sports headlines. Believing you to jockey. <laughs> Let's get into that, eh? Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you about the... Did you watch the fight? With um, Better Be Evan Smith. No, I missed it. I just saw pictures of him got looking like he got pasted in. <laughs> yeah, 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 he was busted up. Finished him. Finished. <laughs> Wasn't even close. Just, just a pure beating. What round did he drop him in? Seventh, seventh round. He dropped him twice, and then uh, Buddy McGurk, who's his trainer, just stepped in. He didn't even throw the towel. In. He he just stepped in. No way. And, and said, "Please, please." To say it weren't close. And you got knocked out, but you lost it seven rounds. That sounds tough. That means yeah, you just 100%. got beat. 100%. 100%. Like, even from, like, what, round one? You know what the thing is? I don't want to sound disrespectful, in it, right? Because, like, the Smith family, they are a legendary boxing family, in it. Mm. But I've always looked to them and said to myself, even though a lot of them were world champions, if not all of them, right? They've never been able to beat the elites. You okay. know what I'm saying? They've always fallen short. And this fight was going to be no different. You know what I'm saying? Like, Better Be Over is just a different type of animal. Yes, he's turning, he's 39 now, by the way. And I was listening to Tony Bellew talk about this as well. So Tony Bellew, he's obviously from them up north, innit? Mm -hmm. He's just defending um, Callum Smith and all that. Because obviously he was talking about the atypical findings. You hear about that as well? No. It's so basically, um, Vada. Is it Vada? Yeah. In, yeah, Vada. They did, um, obviously, the, the PED checks and whatnot. Um, and they found atypical findings. Now, that doesn't mean it's adverse findings. So they didn't find anything where it's like, okay, cool, there's banned substances. They found the heightened uh, testosterone and HDV, HGV, I believe it is. But what they're saying is, it's higher than normal, but it's still not adverse. It's not something where we can be like, yeah, this is wrong. Da -da. And they're the most stringent when it comes to testing. You know what I'm saying? They do all the UFC, they do random all over the place, right? I think they're the ones who caught Dillian White, um, is it Conor Ben as well? Basically, everyone that gets caught is by them. Mm. So they've said this is not like advert. He's not cheating. It's just atypical. And this was back in the end of last year. And obviously, the way Eddie Hearn kind of spun the narrative is, is more so like, oh, yeah, you know, we tried to find out more information or waiting for more information. Uh, we've only been told and making it seem as though there could be something untoward. You know what I'm saying? And now that this guy basically kills Callum Smith in the ring, Tony Bellew is now, I heard him speaking on, is it... Um, What's it called? Talk sport about how you know how is this guy thirty nine? He, he just keeps getting stronger. <laughs> <laughs> how is this happening? <laughs> but like we um, discussed it last week, right? The guy had nineteen fights and nineteen knockouts. Yeah, it's that simple. Like the writing was on the wall. You know what I'm saying? Like he beat and Anthony Yard's a good fight. We know Anthony Yard's a good fight. He's only lost the top um, competition, Kovalev, um, and Better BF. To be fair, he lost to Arthur as well, but. People debated that, especially, and when they had a second fight, he totally destroyed Arthur, right? So I'm only counting those two losses, really, that he, he lost to. Um, and they were, those were elite world champions. And he put in a good, he did well against Better BF. Yeah, he got stopped, but he did well. There were times where we looked at Better BF like, ooh, like he, he might be in trouble here. He, he looks kind of, you know what I'm saying? Did a little um, shake, whatever it may be. But Callum Smith had no chance, man. And the reality is, he's just on a different level. I don't understand why so many people are talking about, oh, Callum Smith could do it. He, he's much stronger at 175. He could actually stop better behavior. He could do this, could do that. 
the reality is he just wasn't going to win. He wasn't going to win. And I think the way he got beaten was just um, was just bad, man. It, it, like, it's, it's a fight where if you was to watch it, you'll think to yourself, I'm not too sure it's going to win between him and Bivol. And by the way, I think that fight is definitely going to happen, man. It might happen in June or something. That's going to be like basically the Terence Crawford-Spence fight. That's how big that fight is. May not necessarily be because both of them, th those two guys, Bezbiev and Bivol, are not necessarily um, the most... Like they don't sell fights like obviously, like Spence and Crawford probably would. You know what I'm saying? But in terms of elite level skill, and how dedicated and disciplined they are, undefeated fighters um, will be in. Um, what do you call it? Undisputed as well. This is going to be probably the biggest. Oof! It's one of the biggest fights of the year, man. The only fight that could be bigger is probably um, is Fury and Usyk. Yeah, and that's that's undisputed as well. It's, it's going to be a crazy year for boxing, man. Last year was probably the best year in the last, I don't know, 20 years or something. This year would probably be another one. Well, here's here to more boxing. Mm -hmm. Before we continue, yeah. um, just to address this, um, to joke it, we are joking. <laughs> just, if it wasn't obvious, we are joking. Don't let Ed get you riled up. Ed is a troublemaker. To joke he's got thicker skin than that, man. He ain't, he ain't worried about all that. He said tomorrow we're calling. Hmm? He said tomorrow he'll call in. Amen. He watched all the games. He said he wants to wait another day and then um, call in to tell us all about that. He also said that yesterday, so. Nah. People need to know it's people, what we do on here, right? Because when is everybody else, ev everyone else is happy to chime in <laughs> and be doing <laughs> jokes. I'm not going to say who, but when it was the other person, <laughs> it was very quick <laughs> to say names. <laughs> Gotta take it, man. Yeah, he used to Gotta be one it. of the ones that were, you know, throwing jabs at front and centre. Exactly, until he embarrasses his wife on here. And, and talks about <laughs> the Bradzilla situation. <laughs> <laughs> we got to joke there. Yeah, when you call up, just stick to the football. Just, <laughs> just stick to the games. Don't even go to the Premier League. I feel like he can't stick even be there. on the phone around his wife. He's going to have to like talk about me again. <laughs> I wonder if she ever saw that. Big <laughs> uh, up to joke there. Yeah. Good vibes. Big up, big up. Big him up, man. All right. Well, no, we've we pressed on it already. Sure have. Well, this down there is a bit of a weird one. one um, this is a tale of honour. And loyalty, and real, 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 nigga, real nigga business. If you, um, firstly, barking a guy, barking a guy crazy, barking a guy too hard. As in Ramsey's barking. Yeah. Oh. Basically. You ready here about barking? They find the man. Yeah. And this is how serious they are. This is how serious they are about keeping their streets clean. <laughs> Even though the place is a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, you know what I'm saying? They find the man because a cigarette come flying out of his window. They f he threw the cigarette out of his window. Okay. They find him. They've arrested him. I don't, I don't think they arrested him. I think they maybe, I don't know if they sent the fine in the post. Or I think they sent the fine in the post. Retrospective action they took, yeah, for a cigarette. Very really retrospective. So what, the camera, are they well, looking at watching cameras now? Must be. I mean, they're bored. There's more serious crimes going on. I know littering is serious and stuff, but it, it weren't like it was a McDonald's. Yeah. If it was a Big Mac or something, I can... Because yeah, sometimes I'm driving, I see a whole McDonald's bag in the middle of the road. I'm like... <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Who is this? Who raised you? <laughs> if it was a Big Mac barbecue sauce on the side of the floor and thing, I could kind of hear where they're coming from. It was just a little cigarette butt. <laughs> you get me? Cigarette butt. And they sent it to man, and they're like, you got to come have your day in court. Registered to tear. He's a registered driver, but he's a registered owner of the car. Mm. Apparently, he wasn't even driving on the day, though. So he's like, mm. I wasn't driving, boom, boom. They said, okay, cool. Well, you're the registered owner. you got to do this. Apparently, the police have even come and showed him a picture of the driver. They've obviously screenshotted the video. Zoom in and all sorts. Zoom in, mm. like, boom, boom. This man's real, man. It was him? No, no, he said no snitching. It wasn't him. So it actually wasn't him? It wasn't him. And he, he didn't say out, who he was. He had to fill out the details for the driver. You know when you like. Oh yeah, he said no. We yeah. said an A, not available. He said I'm not giving up. He said I'm not giving up. He said I'm not doing it. Snitching ain't dead. You niggas just scared. No, that don't even make sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I just I thought you had a moment to think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed that. I missed that right up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying the N word. That's what happens. Consequences. But he kept it real, man. He wouldn't snitch. So they called him to have his day in court. He kept it. He went even further. Mm. 
went to court, time for pleas and D's. He just said guilty. Mm. Ah. Yeah, man, die on his sword, on his shield, like a man. You ain't gonna come in and intimidate me and get me to sell my friends down the river and all that. No, judge, I'm guilty. All right. Now he's got to pay sixteen hundred pounds. It's one thousand <laughs> cigarettes. Six hundred and eighty-eight pounds. This man has to pay. That's one thousand. One thousand. That is a lot of money. Okay, so, okay, so wait a minute, wait a minute. That he didn't smoke. So as you didn't snitch yet, didn't say who he was yet. Mm. Is that person the one who should be paying for the paying the fine? Sure. Ah, so you're saying like I didn't snitch on you. I'm gonna pay this, but you give me my money back. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I'm not even paying in the first place. Because if I pay, it, I'm definitely not giving you money back. No, you. If you, you pay a bill, I'm you, definitely not giving you money back. You'd have to snitch then to get the person to pay it. No, no. So what I'm saying is, so say, say, let's say it was us, right? Yeah. You were the one driving. I go to court. I'm like, do you know what? Guilty. Yeah. They say it's one thousand six hundred and eighty. Yeah. I'm like, right, cool. And then you're. But gonna I'm coming to, to you. I'm saying, Mark, yeah, yeah, yeah. that cigarette butt you dropped in my car. Here's your bill. And I'm going to say, why would you go guilty and you're innocent? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies why? and gentlemen, and this, and this is why you snitch. <laughs> this, is, this is why you snitch. Because guess what now? Your credit score is low. <laughs> what shit you didn't even do. I'll say, why would you say you was guilty and you didn't do now, anything? No, I'm getting money from you. I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't not snitch. And I'm the one who has to pay the bill. That is big P, you know. That's crazy morning. That's wild. I'll be down bad. I'll be blowing. But I feel like they definitely want to teach him a lesson. Though. It's not worth 1,000. I feel like because he didn't snitch. Because he tried to go there and stand on business. Yeah, yeah that's why they said, all right, stand it's on this business. It's a stand on this, isn't it? Stand on this. Oh, well. Now you're weak in the knees and shit. <laughs> He's, yeah, not done it. He's not done it here, though. He kept it true. Yeah. So maybe, I hope his friend did pay it, though. Mm. I couldn't go down for something like that, yeah. I said, go down. Go down to the courthouse for something like that <laughs> and you don't pay the fine. That's impossible. I'd be livid still. I'd be fuming. I'd rob you. I come to your house and every week and just take stuff. And then at some point... I don't know how I'd do it. If you're worth... I think I tell them, look, I'm not snitching. <laughs> I'm not snitching. I'm just going to put all your details on these papers. Just snitching. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Your Honor, I'm not going to say who it was. It was that man. <laughs> <laughs> that is snitching. I'm just going to give him your name and that address. That is snitching. Just because you didn't, you didn't say it. You didn't verbally say it. You snitched. That's, I feel that's even worse. <laughs> you put that name in the system. You're driving it could have been car. hearsay had you said it. Now it's written. Someone's driving your car and they get flashed speeding. Mm. And they don't want to take the details. Are you putting the name on the, on the paper? I feel like that happened to me one time. They're telling you I'm not yeah, taking. Yeah, one time, I was, I'm not one time I was driving my mum. You yeah. wasn't driving, and they're telling you <laughs> I'm not taking half. these points. I was fuming. One it. time, yeah, <laughs> my mum wanted to go somewhere, so she's like, "Okay, oh, you take me down." I was like, "Okay, oh, cool." I said to her, "I said I don't think she's like go go down this road." Da, 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 da. But I feel like sometimes she thinks of roads how back in the day when it was like two pounds to get a license and whatnot. Yeah, went down the road. What did I get a letter? She's not going to that road. Here's a fine. I was like, "Okay, I'll half it with you." I said, "It's your fault." She's like, yeah, but as a driver, <laughs> she basically said I should have stood on business. <laughs> I'm looking at her like, you're right. That, yeah, reminds, that reminds me of a story. I I'm not even going to say it now. Guys, too late. You're already here. <laughs> <laughs> too late. Oh, my day. That day was so annoying. It's <laughs> so annoying. Minding my business at home. My auntie's like, oh, can I drop her to work? It's like, all right. Oh. All right, cool. So I jump in the car now. Driving down my, my street. And it's, it's not one way. People can come whatever. But it's... <laughs> Cars parked on both sides, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm I'm really reluctant to go. I really don't want to go. But obviously, show my respect. I mean, let's go. Mm -hmm. But she keeps talking to me. She keeps talking. And she likes talking as well. Oh, right? my car. You have to be silent. <laughs> my car. She keeps talking to me. <laughs> and then the car comes. And then um, I'm reluctant to, to think. But obviously, I want to get this sorted, in it? So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to reverse back, in it? Yeah. Oh, no. So I've reversed now. Like... <laughs> And I've turned in some in some mad way, and my car's hit a car at the back, and I'm just I just sit there. I'm like, oh. and I thought like she would. They would stay the obvious. Like, oh, didn't you see the car there? Well, clearly I didn't. Because <laughs> I hit it. This is when the talking started. Oh, that's when it started. Oh, sh should we go? Oh no, let's go. Oh, but we can't go. We are Christian. Oh no, we can't. It kept going, no, kept going, no. kept going. She said we are Christian. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll never forget. That's exactly what she said. You know, that's a real kept life talking. That's kept actually talking. a real life temptation. That's that's a battle <laughs> between the spirit and your flesh. <laughs> the flesh said, "She can yeah, drive, drive, I'm drive." Telling you, I'm telling you. I'm so sure obviously I went, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> she never prayed for you, Judge. She definitely, she definitely felt. Oh, that. that was so annoying. That's the worst so thing. So annoying. Man. Getting a fine or doing something when you had no business being in the first place. Mm. Oh. So annoying. Yeah, man. But anyway. Should have snitched. Long and short of it. Should have <laughs> snitched. I would have. I can't say he's done it because he didn't snitch, though. Because I think, what I, actually, no, what I would do, though, if I got a summons, right, to the court, I would let you know, you know when you did this, by the way, that was all you. How are we playing this? Mm. I would let you know. So that, I would say to you, I'm probably going to get a fine. And if I get a fine, you're going to pay that, right? So we will, we'll be in agreement. Mm. And then when I go and get the, and then get the fine, then yeah, then you have it. I don't know if I'm getting points though, because I'm going to show up my insurance. Mm. I'm also going to mm. add a bit of extra to the fine for the inconvenience that you caused me. Interest. Interest, 100%. Yeah, man. So that's two grand bill. Also stamps. Or because you want to smoke. You want a cigarette. <laughs> yeah, man. All right, well, I don't know who's done it, but maybe barking for being so strict. Such a shambles of a borough as well. We know sometimes and, like. And, and you want to charge. What? Yeah, but you know sometimes they're like. The only way to get into a routine of things is for to start. That's true. So, you know, they've, they've started now. Got to lead by example, set examples, either, isn't it? Because littering, littering is a problem, because I'd, I'd be littering, so. Isn't that illegal? Fair. So, fair enough. But also, I'm providing work and job satisfaction. I hate when people say stuff like that, you know. <laughs> Imagine someone when came did you out to teeth? do Yeah. But that's right. Imagine yeah. someone came out to do their job Retweet. and there was nothing to do. Mm. Like, find another job. Huh? It's like when people go to shops here, like clothing shops here, they just drop things on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh no, but I'm giving them something to do. It's, this is someone's job. Yeah, because you're right. Because mm. I mean, you have to come through, pick this up, fold it, put it back where it's supposed to be. I'm giving you the, your day mm. structure and things. So making, like, making your day, you know. I'm the worst for that, boy. I'll be putting things, I'll be throwing the, the jeans on the jumpers. <laughs> <laughs> no, the worst is in food shops. When you go to a, like, you've got the cereal section and there's meat there. I'm like, oh, come on, man. It's yeah. going to go off in like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you could have walked back. Especially when the meat section is by the checkout, hun. You could have put it back in the A fridge. did not have to be a specific fridge. A fridge. <laughs> yeah, people are funny, man. Yeah, well. I think Barking's done it, man. Mm. It's a shit We ain't so strict. All right. All right, cool. Let's get into our interview. Let's do it. Lovely. Perfect. Morning. How are you? Morning. Um, I have had the morning <laughs> from my nightmares. Basically got in my car, didn't work. No. And then it was like when I started driving, the petrol light like, started flashing. Oh my like, gosh. You know when you're like future me, I didn't do any of that stuff. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't cute. So then I just broke down to Tesco. So um As in like round the corner. Oh, As in the car broke down. Yeah. I thought you meant you were crying. I was gonna say I would have right. cried from when no. <laughs> when I was, when I got in the car and it didn't start, I would have started crying. I was on the cast where I was like, I don't know how Because I'm just a girl hun. my morning. <laughs> no, honestly. Oh no. Yeah. But it's okay, we move. I feel like you're yeah, giving yeah. me good vibes in here. So Okay, good. Love let's that. Let's move it forward into a positive space. Oh, I love that. Okay. Please <laughs> let people know who you are. Okay, hi everyone. <laughs> I am Rachel Allison. I'm the founder of an agency called Axon Saw. Yes. Um, and yeah, excited to talk to you. Love it. What is your agency? Actually, no, no, we'll get into all of that. Okay. No. I, I love your hair, by the way. Like, this Thanks. is my next hairstyle. It's Thank absolutely you. gorgeous. I love your hair as well. Thank you. <laughs> Look at that. Women. Look at us girls. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Brent, what was that? <laughs> You're so annoying. You all always feel obliged to re no. return the same compliment? No, but no, it's but a she genuine truth. Like she, she didn't walk in and say, hey, Esther. Oh. No, but she does like it. She was going for a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. I was going, going for a lot. A lot. She's Let going for a lot. <laughs> <laughs> My hair was the least of her worries. <laughs> <laughs> but I did then clock it and was like, it's cute. Thank you, girl. He's a hater, so it's I right. know. I'm a feeling hater. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, right, with all our guests, mm -hmm. no pressure. Yeah. I feel like you just come from high pressure situations. <sighs> okay, yeah, But go. we have a general knowledge, um, this or that <laughs> questions yeah. that we ask all our guests. Okay. Um, Chuck me in. We do keep... Scores. Mm -hmm. um, allegedly. It's allegedly. <laughs> Remember, well, we started the first year, we start, year, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so have, you got the, have you got the question? Yes. Okay. 
don't even know if he does. I'm <laughs> Okay, see, he does, he does, he does, fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, so basically, us is some um, general knowledge and it's also this or that. Okay. Like preference kind of thing. Um, yeah. And we do keep scores. Okay. I have like a whole board thing, this is the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and we do it over 140 beat. So you don't have to just answer it. If you don't know the question as well, or the answer to it, you are you can say pass. Okay. Yeah, okay. Brent, are you ready? I, I'm yeah. ready. Yeah. All right, are you all it. ready? Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Are you guys ready? It's us. Are you ready? Do I just have to answer quickly? Yeah. So the more yeah, so the more you go through, the more points you're likely to get, basically. Okay, fine. Yeah, right. Yeah. <sighs> Let me get going. Do you want to start, Mars? I'm going to the top. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Okay. <clears throat> All right. The amount of my pressure hurt. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you'll be fine. Just think of it as just, okay. little, just a little game. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Three, two, one. Movies or documentaries? Documentaries. Lume is the capital of what African country? Pass. Greenland is geographically part of what continent? Pass. Mm. So bad at geography. Writing or reading? <laughs> reading. Mozambique is located in which part of Africa? North, oh. south, east or west? South. What's the main ingredient in hummus? Chickpeas. Home or abroad? What did you say? Home or abroad? Abroad. Uh, what no? What Caribbean country does Trevor McDonald originate from? I'm gonna say Trinidad and Tobago. What's the capital of Trinidad and Tobago? Oh, pass. <laughs> 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 I'm so bad at geography. This is so embarrassing. Ghana Jollof or Nigerian Jollof? Um, Ghana and Jollof. So I was... Oh, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what Afrobeat artist has a hit song called Unavailable? Oh my gosh! Stop. Help me. Pass. <laughs> How long does it take the Earth to make a complete rotation? Just like five days. Wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. Gym, gym or good diet? Um, both. Uh, can I do that? Yeah. Well, you did it. Okay, I'll say. Yeah, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> you did that. Um, not bad to be fair, actually. Oh, no. Nice. Why was you this a four. geography test? You got yeah. really capable. Of me. I was like, do you know what? The one thing I'm not good at is geography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so bad. Yeah, no, you didn't do too bad, to be fair. No, I did you got, really bad. That's you got one, best. two... That's like a pub quiz, guys. That wasn't Basically, cute. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got three right. Did I? Yeah. That's yeah, you did all right. Out of the mm-hmm. one, out two... Out of the, like, 12. Three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven. Yeah, out of seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight, sorry. I didn't get 50% then. No, eight. It's three out of eight. <laughs> 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 to be fair, though, some people don't get anything right. Oh, okay, yeah, that's good. So, right. exactly. I yeah, I know, that actually helps me. To be fair, though, they're not on the board that you're currently on in terms mm. of the were last year. Mm. But still. Well, I've set the bar really high, so future guests might Hopefully. be there, right? What did Jay get? Well, I think Jay got four. So, you're near right. so the top. The second, second, place. second place. Silver out medal. Out of two. Out of two. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> No, if you got zero, right. I would have said, "Ma'am, you less." <laughs> <Because> <laughs> so, so it's so not, funny. it's not too bad, not too bad. Uh, but can you please let us know what Accent Saw is, please? Yeah. So Accent Saw is a PR agency. Um, if you wanted to like put it in its most simplest terms, yeah. but it is, in my eyes, like an evolution of what a PR agency is about. Yeah. So much more focused on storytelling mm-hmm. and um, really platforming underrepresented people and yeah. businesses and so kind of I think it's a bit of an antidote to what is currently out there mm-hmm. um and so yeah that's my version of what it is I was gonna say what is traditional PR because I think we mm. all use PR in really a slang different. way like you've got bad exactly. PR yeah, yeah. I don't know what the hell it is yeah do you know what I think PR like my family didn't know what PR was like my mum mm. still straight up sent me PA jobs and was like isn't this what you do it's got um, pee in it yeah she was like and then if I'd be like oh I landed this and they'd be on TV she'd be like where are you then and I was oh, like um ma'am. that's not quite my job I'm the behind like, the scenes did girl. you write this I'm like no I didn't write that either um so I would say it's basically managing reputation whether that's mm. like a brand or a person okay. um and then like uncovering what the story is okay. for that person or brand or organization mm. and then telling it to the masses, whatever platform that is. Oh, oh you like that. So what inspired you to start? Have you always had a history in PR? Um, inspired me to start. I really like talking. Actually, to be honest, I started without understanding what PR was. Like, okay. I definitely fell into it. Um, I was the girly that watched all the reality TV shows before it was cool. So like... I was like watching The Hills and like yeah. all that nonsense. And 
I feel like the ones that were always out having a fun time said they worked in VR. Oh, yeah. So that was basically my uh, call to action. I like that. That, that sounds like, like I would yeah. do. <laughs> it, feels, it sounds cool. looks great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I sounds could do it cool. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you get freebies? Oh, my God, I love that. I would love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, that was basically my, like, naive brain. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of fell into it off the back of that. Um, was originally, like, trying to do fashion and stuff, but mm. it was, like, quite a, uh, like, toxic environment, I would mm. say. Um, and so I started to like branch out a bit more and then yeah. kind of fell into what I do, closer to what I do today. Okay, and how long have you been doing it for? Uh, 13 years. Oh, wow, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I look quite yeah. young then. I love that for you. Thank you. Is that, wow. Yeah, you could have started when you was 10. Exactly. That's not what I was That'd going be with that <laughs> 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 You might not want to say that before you might have to get your parents <laughs> <laughs> looked into. <laughs> Earning her keeps. <laughs> So can, can anyone hire um, a PR agency? Yeah. Regardless of what they're doing. So if, uh, I, was, if I was a preacher. Yeah. They could. need them. Mm. Yeah. They, I wish some of them did. Yeah. Do you know what? You pro- I actually think like religion to some extent is a bit like if you wanted to. I like to look at things objectively and I kind of feel like religion to some extent is a form of PR, like mm-hmm. getting people on board, mm-hmm. capturing audiences, telling the stories, um, making people change their behavior off the back of it. That's so crazy. I hope there's no pastors listening. This is gonna be the Sunday sermon. <laughs> True. That sounds like a word. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I've missed my calling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's quite, yeah, I think it's quite. So saying that then, are there certain people or certain um, areas where you'd be like, no, we're not working with you? Yeah. Like, I think it has to align with your values. I think mm. that was part of why I set up by myself because, uh-huh. like, the good thing with PR is that you can have, there's, you can pretty much always tell a story if someone's willing to, like, dig deep and tell you what mm-hmm. they're about and what their business is about. Um, but sometimes you do do things for the sake of doing things, especially mm. when you're, like, at a big agency or I don't know, whatever the motivation of someone who's created their company might be yeah. probably monetary and keeping things afloat. I get yeah. it. But actually then it kind of le- le- lost its purpose for me. Mm. And so, I mean, I started it in the middle of the pandemic mm. um, pretty much after George Floyd mm. uh, got murdered. And it was off the back of being in spaces where a, I was the only person of color mm-hmm. and like a gigantic organization making decisions with other founders and mm-hmm. CEOs. And originally when I suggested just like simple things around making sure we're being inclusive with the yeah. people we're working with or like if we're going to tell this story, can we make sure the right voices are on mm-hmm. it? All of those things are like brushed under the carpet mm-hmm. being like, I think we're going a bit too urban and like, mm-hmm. you know, all these mm-hmm. like code the words. words. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like, I, I felt... That, like I didn't feel good doing the work I was doing mm-hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. Then that happened, and obviously for every black person, I'm sure around the world, like it triggered a lot of like h- how many different things have I suppressed over yeah. the course of my career, and I've not actually spoken up about. And I was just like, Do you know, what? I don't want to do this anymore. Mm. And you know, same conversations with the same CEOs being like, Oh yeah, actually, can we? Um, how would we respond to? this backlash mm. and I was just like oh now um, you're coming to me yeah mm-hmm. do you know what? my voice is now suddenly important is yep. it interesting um and so I kind of was just like I'm not about that anymore and mm. I was moaning hard to all my girls and they were just like either like sack it off because yeah. you've tried the different variations you thought were going to succeed or just yeah. do it the way you think it should be done and mm. I went for the second one had nothing to lose really like yeah. and then weirdly still Still growing. Love so, that. Great. <laughs> do you feel like, do you feel more grace? Because you know, especially during the George Floyd, during all that time, and companies are being called out for not being inclusive of black people. And obviously, I guess pictures of people that were on boards and stuff like that came out and they're like, oh, there's a black person there, but why are you not signing up for our people? Da, da, da. What's, your, what's your thoughts on that? I think it is so hard to speak up in a room where you're the minority. Mm. I do think it's like, I know I've, I've been in those situations yeah. and it's like, it's like, you know, and you have an argument with someone mm-hmm. and like you come out of it and you're mm. like, oh, I could have gone and said, oh, but yeah, they did, yeah. they, but, and then like, and you, even when you replay it to your friends, you're like, actually I could have just pulled them up on that point mm. or like, so, that is 
always the way that you'd feel in those spaces, especially yeah. if it's not a, a safe space. Like, mm. and they make it quite clear to you that you're different at yeah. every opportunity. And I think I like, especially where like a couple of times in my career where I've felt like othered or like different to other people. Yeah. And the more that you kind of speak up and the more it gets shut down, the more you start to lose your voice. Like I have yeah. such a big gob, I talk all the time. <laughs> and I definitely was like, barely saying mm. words like towards the end of like my roles in yeah. certain places because I just didn't feel like my voice mattered. Mm. And I think that that would happen if you're the only black person on a board yeah. of like 20 other people. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I think you've probably spoken up a couple of times. They're like, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. And you're just like, right, so Nothing's, nothing's happening, <laughs> yeah. And like, if it keeps happening, you suddenly just like, I can't be bothered to speak up anymore. Yeah. And it and it must feel horrible when that comes out and you are that only black person in that space. And everyone's like, why didn't you, why didn't you do this? Da, 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 da. And it's like, that must be even harder to like yeah, grapple to with. with afterwards, yeah. 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 Is, is that something that you're kind of conscious of um, now? So now that you started um, Axel, so we're going to get into the name and everything, right? Okay. Like, when you're having meetings with your clients and stuff, are you yeah. conscious of who you've got around them, making them feel comfortable? Mm. Is there a certain um, demographic that you need to have in certain areas? Like, what, what, what's your thinking to to make sure that you kind of remedy the problems that you was facing? Yeah. Um, I think by the, like, very nature of what I've put out in, like, where we stand on matters, like, the type of clients that we work for, with rather yeah. I should say and the stories that we tell mm -hmm. I think it's like attracted like minded people so yeah. like in a way I haven't really I don't think been in like that many situations where like at the end of the day I don't think you wouldn't know that a black woman runs the agency mm -hmm. which okay is, yeah at the at the start of the situation mm -hmm. you're coming into it with an open mind yeah right? because there's so few of us mm -hmm. that are actually running agency yeah so like when you kind of yeah i don't think i've had to face uh the same situation yeah. than when i was in, an employee mm. um but i suppose from like a personal perspective like I try and eradicate all of the like, um, what you get in PR, it's quite like buzzwordy, it's quite okay. like um, who you know, and mm, quite, okay, it, yeah. it just feels, it's quite a hard thing to break into if you don't know like Anyone? the social cues, mm, if that okay, makes yeah. sense. I am like the first person to like rip that out and be like completely mm. normal with someone. Like if a client is being erratic, mm. I'll be like, what, like what? popping with you today what, Why doing you? Yeah, what yeah, was yeah. happening like i'm not here to be like all uptight and like mm. make it into some like uptight space where people yeah. can't be themselves and like you know I've, I've been in places where you like can't wear certain clothes and, mm. da, 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 and like i've also been in places where you are allowed to and the difference in like how people feel comfortable just yeah. as a minimum is yeah. like yeah it, it speaks for itself i was gonna ask the so speaking up for so say for when for example when you worked with before you created, started your own agency. Yeah. Just speaking up and like saying things like we should be more inclusive or we should add this and bring it forth ideas. Do you kind of kind of become like yeah. the the race girl? And then does that affect how you can grow in that industry? Uh, well, not industry, I guess where you are. Do you know, it doesn't affect how you can grow. Yeah. But you just have to be prepared to be constantly having the same conversation. Okay. And like perhaps not see that much change. Mm. And... For me, that's quite uh, frustrating. Like, yeah. if people come to me with problems, I'm probably, like, a really jarring friend because, yes, mm -hmm. I'm listening, but I'm also, like, how can we solve this? Let yeah. me see if I can pull a plan together for you. Like, da-da-da-da-da. Yeah. And so, for me, just, like, repeating the same thing over and over, mm -hmm. being, like, you need to make sure there's more diversity in your campaigns. Like, yeah. and then seeing, like, one black girl. Yeah. And it's, like... Mm -hmm it's a bit boring to me. Like, I'm I'm not here to just, like, keep repeating. I also think it, like, dumbs your brain down just having yeah. the same, same, same conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I, I, I'm more than that. And I yeah. think I can make more change doing it the way that I'm doing mm. now rather than, like, being the person that brings race into the conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely, 100%. Do you feel like sometimes, as black people, sometimes we expect too much, though? Because we're, like, three and a half percent of the country. Mm. And sometimes we expect more of a representation, diversity. Like, if there's 10 people there, we should be only, you know what I mean, a certain amount. Yeah. Or do you feel like, yeah, yeah, what's your thoughts on that? Um, I think this is a really interesting point because there's two, there's two points to this. Mm -hmm. One is, 
me personally, as a black woman running an agency, I grappled at the very beginning with like whether my team should be an all black team okay, or yeah. like um, POCs. Okay. I thought like, is that what I'm trying to put out there? Is, mm -hmm. the, is the point I'm making yeah. that like it's diverse from a racial perspective mm -hmm. as a black woman running an agency and that is the, like the natural, like positive yeah. thing that you get from working with us. Mm -hmm. And I actually like took a step back and it, like I didn't really know because then you end up hiring on mm -hmm. purpose, mm -hmm. right? Like, and I, I don't, I can't remember what the word is. Sorry, my brain is like all over the place from this morning. Um, positive discrimination. Sorry. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah. Wow, I got that. <laughs> um, so <laughs> you end up then creating a culture of positive discrimination. Mm. I don't know if I think that is the way that I believe being progressive is. Okay. And so I think, and how I've like thought of it from like doing lots of reflection is like the progress the progression for me is that a black woman is running an agency when 99% mm -hmm. of the agency is run by white men mm -hmm. or women right mm -hmm. that's already progressive so yeah. the the secondary point of like what is diverse is i think there's a problem with class in the industry like it's all really posh people that talk the same and mm. go to the same places my team aren't posh like yeah. my team like have different interests like mm -hmm. Every like the the main crux for me is like, do you get it? Do you mm. actually understand other people's struggle? Mm. Yes or no? If you are able to understand it, then you're part of what I'm trying to create. Yeah. And I don't think that needs to come down to your skin color. Mm. Um. And do you know what? I'm not saying like if you're posh, you can't get it. You can. Yeah. But it's like, where's where's your line of empathy and what, yeah, where's the relatability? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. So, I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. Did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Mm. Where are you from? Where did you grow up in? Watford. Okay. Mm. On the ends of yeah. Anthony Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> What's your background? Caribbean, so Jamaican. Oh, right. Both then. parents. Oh, got no horns, but. <laughs> He's my fellow Jamaican. There we go. He is. Ah, uh, there you go. Yeah, he's from Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, you got the question about um, Sir Trevor Gordon. Right? Yeah, so he was, oh. he was part of that. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Sir. Okay. Not Sir. <laughs> I actually got stuck there. Goodness me. <laughs> I was going to ask, what made you, what is Axe and Saw? Like the mm. name is so interesting. But it's so, you know, sometimes you hear stuff here and I'm not deep. I feel like I'm only deep in, it's an Axe and a Saw now. But it just sounds very professional. Love axe that. and Saw. You know what I mean? Yeah, but Yeah, thanks. so, yeah. Um, okay, so that took me ages to come up with and I wanted something that lent into my cultural background. So okay. I love the, I love like juxtapositions. I like moving things. Mm -hmm. I like that whole, I was trying to find like verbs or like, and I wasn't really landing anywhere. They all had different connotations, could be put in the wrong context. Mm -hmm. And then I was honestly, I spent like three days just back to back listening to reggae. I was like, come on, ancestors, give me some energy here. Like I need to get a name. I'm so, so, so tired of writing all these random names. And you wanted two things. And um, the Bob Marley song, Small Axe, came mm. on. And mm. I was like, let me just like proper deep the lyrics and like, Figure out why are you laughing? Did you know that? Oh, Branky's point camera on me. Oh. So it's just my <laughs> 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 um, yeah. So he did a song all about like mm -hmm. basically the power of something small and like mm -hmm. chopping things down. And I just thought that's exactly Ooh. the analogy that I want to bring in. Like yeah. I don't I my goal and ambition with the agency is not to be like 150 strong. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to run some giant thing that I don't have sight on what's going on. Like I love doing what I do and I want to be involved. And I love the clients I work with. Yeah. This is like, I'm passionate about what I'm doing. Yeah. And so my thing is that I want to be like small and mighty. Cause mm, I lovely. feel like that's the energy. Like I, I want us to like make an impact. I mm. want us to show bigger things that like we are about it and yeah. we can like make it have much bigger ripple effects yeah. and the other thing that kind of added to that in my head when I was creating this whole storyline is that I like the whole analogy of people sitting around a campfire and just taking it back to basics and telling yeah. stories and mm -hmm. like the power of that coming about and mm -hmm. like how much that can change and shift your mindset like yeah. they're my favorite like things to do is like sitting around and talking to people and just yeah. hearing different people's perspectives so I felt like actually like chopping wood down I just got a whole storyline based off that so I was like right chop that's lit. Your answers have spoke to you, boy. Thank you. It's really good. That's, I really like that. Thank you. So you said with your PR agency, you tell stories, right? Yeah. How is that different to a normal PR agency? Um, 
blah, 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 blah. how is that different? I suppose, or is it different? I suppose every agency would say that they tell stories. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if they have centered it as heavily on storytelling. Okay. I think um, PR can be lots of different things. Like you can launch a product, right? And you can just talk about the product being yeah. great. Like if it's a new Samsung phone, like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, look at the features that Samsung has. Mm-hmm. And like, look at the camera and da 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 da. Whereas like that doesn't really tick my box, doesn't yeah. float whatever the words are. Wow, sorry. Float your boat. That's it, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> doesn't float my boat. Um, and so I have, like if I was to get a brief from Samsung, for yeah. example, my whole thing would be like, but what does what does it unlock the power to tell mm-hmm. somebody? Mm-hmm. So how can we dig deeper? What community would actually benefit from a Samsung product? How can we tell their story okay. utilizing your product? Like I don't want to focus on the like the like grey bit. Yeah. I want to go where it's colourful mm. and like create something that like actually has an impact and like yeah. That's really cool. How many people are on your team now? You said you started on your own, right? Yeah. Mm. So there's nine of us now. That's sick. Yeah. And when did you start Accent Uh Three years ago. That's Wait, like... 2024. Started in 2020. Mm. Sorry. Okay, you're going into the fourth year. Yeah. That's, that's really right. cool. Thanks. Can I just say, yeah, to the mm. people then. Obviously, when you mentioned um, Samsung, mm. that wasn't just a random. You've worked with Samsung. Uh, right? Yeah, but not at, not at this agency. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right, yeah. All right. He's about but, to defend the Android. That's what. That's, oh. Yeah, that's yeah. his calling. He loves <laughs> no, but I was just, I was just I gonna dig up. I did have an Android. It's good. You I did. like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like past obviously, tense. You went, <laughs> obviously, you all going. You don't. Yeah. <laughs> Moving forward. It's quite hard mm. to like go against the grain on the phone. So I rate you. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So you're like, standing on business and I rate work. that. No, but you know, you know what. Funny enough, hearing what you said about, you know, going back to basics. Yeah. That's an iPhone. Yeah. Basics. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. the Android, yeah. complicated, nah, sophisticated a basic intelligence. Is Motorola. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when I hear <laughs> basics, I think of a flip. No, nah, Motorola. Motorola is extinct. They just. Samsung, <laughs> have Samsung brought, I think they've brought black. black they did. Black and flip. Yeah. They did. And that wasn't tied for a second. A flip and a fold. Yeah, they have. Uh, Do you know what, actually? Yep. I. W- random story but i was at christmas and my brother-in-law yeah that's right brother, I, was trying to think of my rela- <laughs> I was trying to think of what the relation is. anyway he's like really techie okay and he has the um galaxy flip oh yeah and i was like i remember when they briefed us in on that like years ago and mm. they were like they want it to be this like cool like gen z flip mm. thing and he's like so nerdy like the opposite to their consumer. And then he has like an attachable, like full keyboard that he just like whips out and does all his like QWERTY keyboard. That's thingy. actually, yeah. That sounds I'm, like a typical Samsung owner. Mm. And and I think they're like kind of missing the mark. Like the Gen Z ain't jumping <laughs> on it. <laughs> like they need to go where their, their tribe is, which is actually like kind That's of so like people that want to go that against wanna the do grain that. and want to like spend time Figuring shit out a little bit more than mm, like yeah. an iPhone people who are just like mm, we just want to base. I'm trying to just call, make a text call, and go. get a little WhatsApp go, you know, it. Instagram, <laughs> lucky me, that's it. That's too funny, man. Yeah. As I say, so do you enjoy working with clients as an individual clients more or brands? I I don't know, it depends on what the brand's vibe is. Like okay. if a brand's about like doing something differently, then I'm like, I love it because A, they have more budget to play with, so you can yeah. actually create like Something. a big thing yeah. um but like i love i love i love working with people and if like mm-hmm. people are buying into what we're offering mm-hmm. then it's actually like normally an enjoyable process i haven't mm-hmm. actually had a bad client relationship yet to touch with <laughs> <Love that. laughs> yeah let's keep it that way 2024 what's the, what's the actual process like so let's just say someone like marcus comes in here and do you know much about his um you know earn your check boy yeah <laughs> <laughs> um uh, his brand no tell me <laughs> <laughs> i can't even describe it what's my brand you pitch it to me you said you will earn your check that's what i'm gonna tell you tell me. <laughs> i wouldn't even know i need to do some um brand development i wouldn't even know how to describe my brand he does multiple things yeah okay so he's got a podcast called no behavior yeah Oh, yeah. It's called No Behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll let that sink in. It's called No Behavior because absolutely No Behavior would have been too long. Mm. <laughs> 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 Very good. That should, should be his like, <laughs> <laughs> Um, And then he also, 
runs Pen Game, which puts basically puts up upcoming rappers on. They do like a little battle, rap oh, battle. Yeah, yeah. Rapper sick. Yeah. Um, what else do you do? Does TD, of course. His best job. The one he I'm loves like a triple threat. I rap, I sing, I dance. <laughs> you dance? <laughs> Why is she going to an accent? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I was here for it. But I dance. He dances. <laughs> <laughs> But he so, tends to say provocative things every single time he opens his mouth. Mm. Yeah. All the time. So you're like, what? The like Black Piers Morgan energy? No. Nah. Ooh. I hate Provo- Piers. <laughs> no, no, no. I get it. But like, that's your... That's your story. Mm. Your bit. I'm, no, I'm not taking it. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry not Who else Black is provocative? Who's provocative? In media. In media. In... Do you want to go black or... I don't mind. He's, like, you... he's like old Charlemagne. Mm. Uh, Okay. Like yeah, a PR okay. nightmare. I mean, Charlemagne was worse, but yeah. We'll put, Charlemagne yeah. was worse than me. Charlemagne was, a, was the worst thing to happen to the internet <laughs> at that time. I love Charlemagne, by the way, but back then... I'm kind of media trained. What? Yeah. Yeah? Kind of. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Know, yeah, he knows when he goes too far. Okay, that's But good. he's already said it, though. Mm. Yeah. He just wanted to take I'm it further. Aware. Yeah, that's, He's a wet, yeah. That counts for something. Yeah, that does count for oh, something. My friend, my friend. My friend. <laughs> <laughs> He's media trained when he has a paid job, right? <laughs> On his Twitter, he's not. On his Instagram, he's not. On here, he's not. <laughs> Everywhere that he hasn't been paid to do, he's not. <laughs> he's got a freedom, he's got a license. Yeah, I don't yeah. know about you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It might be what takes on the agency. Do you, yeah, just... yeah, do you know what I mean? I'm the enigma. But do you have, have you ever had someone kind of come to you and be like, no, because of their reputation? Yeah. Well, if I was a porn star and I wanted PR, would you take me on? Depends on what you're pushing out. Like only fans or porn hub. Rated. But like, is, <laughs> is your story like? I don't like. I'm not um, anti X rated stuff, right? If the story was about you. Like creating your own lane, empowering yourself to do something because, you know, stuff was hard before and you've managed to monetize, like if you're a female, for example, an industry that is like male owned, Mm. like I think that's super interesting. Like I wouldn't focus on the fact that your titties are out. Like that's not really the story that needs to be told. Like they're telling their own story. Mm. So um, they're telling their own story. (laughs) (laughs) They are. They're making themselves. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. But like, if there was like a a interesting like reason why you're doing it, like I think yeah, there's definitely something in there. Mm. I hear it. So you say there's a I got a a vision from from father. He, that is one of his. That is one. <laughs> how, did, how did he it's forget that? That's like it's one of the biggest vision. ones. That's what they call him. That's what he's called. <laughs> That's his current name. That's what the streets know him as. <laughs> the streets call you this Pumpa is... Fada. Yeah. Interesting. Among among other things. Wow, you lucky thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so down. Oh, that is too funny. That's funny. Right, let's get back in the car. This is silly now. <laughs> I was gonna ask, like, what's the process with like working with companies? Uh, I mean, like, it kind of depends. We're pretty, like, flex and bespoke. But, like, what I'd like to do is, like, have, like, quite a, I don't know, like a intro session where you're Mm -hmm. telling me, like, why you started things, what it looks like, all the kind of, like, background Mm -hmm. stuff so that I can get up to speed, Mm -hmm. what your, like, ambition is, all that jazz. And then from that, I'll like go away, do research with the team and then come back with like a bit of a plan as to like Mm. how we think we'd be able to get you close to your ambition, essentially. That sounds really cool. It sounds like you're very, very hands-on. Like from the moment all the way. Yeah. That's a great selling point. Yeah. I I, I genuinely love what I do, even though it can be stressful. Yeah, I was going to say, how do you find it? Because I've got friends that work in PR and... They're stressed, aren't they? Yeah, the close friend says more things than the general stories. (laughs) But (laughs) yeah, like, so how do you actually find it? Um, I and ge- running your own agency as well that's a big deal yeah do you know what the PR side of things uh, I would say because it's like clients I am like fully bought into and yeah. I'm like on board with their vision and I'm like really mm-hmm. want them to grow and like all that jazz the PR side of things doesn't stress me out mm-hmm. because I know how to rectify it like I can always think of a way to, out because I'm not I think there's like an amazing thing where you, because I'm not in their business 24 seven, okay, yeah. when they come to me with their like challenges or like, even if there's like, oh, we want to get this, that and the other, mm. 
I can look at it objectively and tell them how we can get yeah. closer. It might not be the same thing that they want, but I'd be like, this actually will help mm-hmm. you better. So that bit doesn't stress me out. But actually running a business mm. is like way more stressful than I thought it would be. Mm. Um, and do you know what? The first couple of years I was like, <laughs> anyone wanted to tell me this like prior to me getting into yeah. the thick of it. Like I just did not have a clue how stressful mm. that side of things was. Like even this is dumb things like having an office space. That's mm. so much admin. It's like having another house. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like it's stressful enough like running yeah. like the place you go to sleep. Like and then you've got to like figure out oh the lighting. Oh how do you do this? Yeah. Oh, with the lamps and every the little desk detail. Is this. It's like oh it's never ending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I like my to-do list are just out of control. Oh. Yikes. Well, they're not out of control, they're in control, but like I have so many. Yeah. Like every week I'm like, life, family, friends, work, office, yeah, yeah, yeah. clients. And I'm like, this is getting a bit extensive. I hear you. But yeah, I just try and like double down on like the three things, yeah. for each of them, and try and move it forward. How often do you talk to the ancestors to help you out on your day to day scheduling? Say that again. How often do you talk to the ancestors to help you out on your day to day scheduling? Not enough, you know. I think I should talk to them a little bit more. Yeah, they might help me out. Mm. Can you um, can you poach a, cl- a client? So, say for example, you see like a company or person, right? But you can tell they've got bad PR. Mm. Like Jonathan Majors, for example, mm. PR's not great. <laughs> can you like, is it snaky in the industry to go after to go to the person and be like, no, I think I can do a better job than what you're currently getting. It is well, yeah, it's snaky in life. But in mm. the industry, it happens quite a lot. Really? Mm. Yeah. Like, it's kind of the process to some extent. Like, you don't really want to go and be like, your PR is rubbish. Like, come mm. to me. But there's ways of saying it. Mm. Like, I've definitely said before, like, noticed you did this. Like, have you thought about doing it a little <laughs> bit better? <laughs> kind of vibe. And I, can, I can upgrade you, hun. Yeah, basically yeah, that. I can that. upgrade you. <laughs> and that that isn't necessarily frowned upon. I was going to say, does that affect your relationships? Like, would... Yeah, I wouldn't do is it that to beef? like a... I wouldn't do it to like a friend that runs an agency. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, mm. but I'm not like madly into the the PR land. Like, I don't... Yeah. That's not really where I play. Okay, I hear you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So I've kind of got my own little group going on and I'd never do that. I'd always like pass the work. Mm. But like, Sick. yeah, why do, why do people... I know they do it to my clients. So anybody can get it at yeah. this point. Yeah. You like, why wouldn't you? Obviously, yeah. my clients are still here, so it didn't work. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> do your clients let you know that people are trying to poach them? Ooh. Yeah, they do, actually. Mm. Is that part of the contract? <laughs> um, As in to let you know? No, they don't have to do anything, but... I Sometimes I'm like, are you doing this to be kind? Mm. Or are you... Dangling. Mm. Are you yeah. letting me know that yeah. you need like, to step up? Do, 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 do. Or I'm about to leave. <laughs> yeah. Like, which one is it? Um, but I do find it interesting, mm. like, to see who would position themselves, mm. like, against, not against, but like, like, do you think that you're better at telling the story? I'm, I'm mm. always intrigued to see, yeah. like, where they'd come at it from. So I don't, I think it's good. It keeps me on my toes, keeps mm. me. Don't, I'm not encouraging any of my clients to start telling me this <laughs> any more than they do, by the way. But like, Make it I, clear. yeah, just, <laughs> you know, I don't need extra mental layers there. But um, yeah, I think it's like interesting for me yeah. to know what's going on in the wider world. Because mm-hmm. you can get a bit insular, right? Like I'm, if I'm just like running my day to day stuff, like yeah. sometimes I don't get to like look up and see like, oh, da 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 What's happening this. around you? Yeah. Mm. And I think that's also healthy to just like keep you fresh. Yeah. Is Cease a client of yours? He is. Did they you all approach him and pitch him or did he approach you? Um, so weirdly enough, we were doing this project with Spotify. I'm just thinking if I had an NDI. I didn't. Okay. So we did this, <laughs> <laughs> this project with Spotify. You mugs my going well, because he already says stuff, then he thinks about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, is this public knowledge? Um, yeah, so we did something with Spotify and he was part of the campaign that we were working on them with. Mm-hmm. And then we basically, uh, he can say it in his own words, but like we basically, I did a lot of research into it and like so did the team. And mm-hmm. I just absolutely became obsessed with what he is creating, like yeah. activity. Yeah. It's exactly the kind of stuff that like Axon was created to support and yeah. like, to work with. 
Anyway, so we kind of went quite hard on like our pitch, even though it was to Spotify yeah. as our client, if that makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, so he was on the call because they were like, we want his approval. Mm -hmm. And he was like, that is, like, I've never seen anyone understand what I'm oh, trying sick. to create. Yeah. So off the back of that, he was like, can you, can we work together? I'd love to. Sick. Sick. Oh, that's amazing. Big up Sace, yeah. man. Big up Sace. He's, such a he's, mm -hmm. dying. he's great. You know, you just feel enriched every, yes. he, came, <laughs> he, he came in to talk to the team and stuff and we were all just like, wow. Like, yeah. it was like a cleanse. Yeah. I had the same reaction when I was talking to him. I was thinking, what an intelligent man. Yeah, it's just so clever yeah. and like really just makes you put things in perspective yeah. in like a in a really refreshing way. Like I wish I had someone like that when I was like a teenager, like mm. questioning things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just yeah. such a great mentor. So Big up Sace, man. It's 100%. actually not really like, I don't really feel like it's a client vibe. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like I also love that with my clients. I learn from every single one of them. They're yeah. all inspiring in their own ways. Mm -hmm. And like they all teach me stuff I just wouldn't normally get the yeah. chance to learn. And that's why I kind of love my job as well. Like, mm. even though I have to do the day to day stuff, like yeah. when I get to talk to all these different founders or like people that are actually about making change, mm -hmm. even if it's in their like small space of their industry, yeah. like, how can you not get passionate and excited yeah. about people that want to do good? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 100%. So, yeah, Sace is uh, definitely one of those people. Love that. I've got two questions I want to ask you. Hopefully I don't forget the second one. Just remind me, say Jonathan from ages. Okay. Right. Oh, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> the first one is, um, obviously, like you said, you see, obviously, the benefit in, in having a small team, right? Yeah. But are you worried that when you do get bigger and bigger and bigger, some of that um, relationship um, opportunity to build and stuff like that with certain clients will kind of go? And how do you kind of, how are you thinking to kind of mit mit mitigate that? Yeah. So, um this is, I think, like the number one challenge, right? When you start an agency or any business, like mm. how do you actually scale with with mm -hmm. like the same purpose and intention that you always wanted to bring to your business? I had to learn quite quickly last year how that could start looking because mm. I found out I was pregnant. Cheers, congrats, yeah. congrats. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah, she's six months old now oh, wow, that's so wow. cute. yeah so that was amazing in so uh, obviously it's like the best thing in my life that's ever happened to me yeah. but what i would say is when i was writing out my vision <laughs> before yeah. on how i was going with with the business like yeah. i uh, because I'm passionate and because it's my own business, I don't really have like that much switch off. Like my mm -hmm. mind's always like, oh my God, yeah. we can come up with this. Yeah. Like, in traveling, I'm like, oh my God, they haven't thought of this. Like, let me mm -hmm. message them. And I was probably running quite fast. Like that is how you grow really mm -hmm. as an agency. And like probably didn't take much time to like ever think about me not being in the equation. Mm -hmm. And so when I found out I was pregnant, I was like, oh, <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> the whole business plan was completely like focused on me doing this, me doing that mm. in terms of the growth. Mm. And like I kind of figured out how I could like get away from more of the like delivery mm. side of things on the day to day. But it fast tracked me having to figure out like how mm. I can be more objective to my own business. Okay, yeah. Um, and so I think now like I've really double down on like the right people for the mm. job. I learned the hard way a couple mm. of a couple of times in hiring last year. Like yeah. and you know, you have to look at it as growth. Like I'm, I'm a, exactly. a lot closer to understanding exactly what someone needs to bring if mm -hmm. they're coming into the agency. And I think now I've, I'm so lucky I've got a really, really good team. Everyone is on the same vibe. We're like so in sync, it's amazing. Yeah. And I and now kind of feel like there's this magic formula that we can mm -hmm. grow with it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I've always said to the team, like I want everyone to grow within the agency. Like I'm excited by people's growth. Like I know when I was that age, I was always like, oh, when can I get promotion? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm not here to stop anyone doing things like that. I just think we just need to like empower everyone mm -hmm. to like want to deliver the same level of work. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that is gonna continue to happen with the people. Amen to that. Thanks. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, 100%. Done for so, so, yeah, second <laughs> question, right? Okay. With certain people, yeah. the line between, I guess, the personal, professional, mm. whatever it may be, mm. do you just have to throw it out the window? The reason I'm asking that is because, like, as it pertains to strategy anyway, because someone like um, Jennifer Majors, yeah, many of us believe 
him being being with Megan Good is a PR arrangement, right? Mm. Would you ever advise someone, listen, it's not looking good for you. Get with this black woman or get with this person. <laughs> or da, da, da. You know what I'm saying? To make yeah. your image look a particular way, to repair. Or is that something where you kind of don't step into? So I don't do celeb PR, but okay. what I would say is celeb PR from like what I understand to be true mm -hmm. is exactly the same as like brand building. So okay. if it was like, let's give another brand, Adidas. Mm -hmm. No, that's not a good example. Anyway, let me try and think of what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so I believe that a lot of celebrities have to go through a, a similar cycle to how you would gain fame as a brand mm. in that you'd have to make clever partnerships to grow your awareness yeah. or you have to generate a new talking point, a new story for you to be mm -hmm. relevant. Mm. Like I... I read this like random book. It's not interesting, so you don't ever need to read it. But it was called like the seven, seven husbands of like Hugo something. I don't know. It was some really random like airport pickup, mm -hmm. right? And it was just about some like Marilyn Monroe type character and how every move to get her film to a certain level yeah. mm -hmm. had to be strategic. So she had to date someone, even though they were like abusing her at home and it's mm. like she had to do this for public persona because each thing allowed her to go into a separate yeah, category go, yep. yeah. and i think in my head not that this is i don't know anything about jlo's life but i would say mm. if you look at her as a good example mm. as to how she strategically like went from being like dating p diddy suddenly she's r&b she's got a mm -hmm. bandana around yeah. her head and she's, she's from the bronx from the bronx mm -hmm. yeah then mm. she wanted to go in the latino space so mark anthony's her husband and she's suddenly mrs mm. spanish blah 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 blah, blah, blah. Yeah. and then next you know what i mean like yeah. every single move she has pivoted like film director ban, ban affleck she's mm. moved into an actress like you cannot see the woman's career and not say that every yeah. single move has it's strategic been. Mm -hmm. intentional mm -hmm. yeah mm. and it's the same with the uk like you see people trying to gain fame and like they're on like celebs go dating, which mm. by the way, I don't get that whole concept. It's clearly just like made it's just for, exactly. yeah. yeah, it's made for that exact purpose, just to give them some airtime. And then eventually they might get like a radio show and mm. you can see the steps of how you like climb the celebrity. Yeah. And I think dating is part of that. You're mm. a brand at the end yeah. of the day and that's what you've got to do. So that's my answer. Mm. Does it typically work though, like a PR <laughs> relationship? So say for example, like oh, actually, let me use... Second? What, like a fake celeb relationship? Yeah, because Jonathan Majors one and Megan, that's allegedly... A P I don't see how this helps anybody. Mm, it, the fact that we're talking about it helps them already. Well, what does that translate to, though? Relevancy. Because, like, the one thing that you don't want to do... Yeah. From what I understand, mm -hmm. is like not be relevant. As soon as okay. you stop being relevant, you don't have fame. You don't mm -hmm. have as much value. Like he, the more that you're speaking about him, he could come out and do a whole, like, oh, this relationship was so toxic. Da 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 da. Yeah. That's a whole new narrative for him to spin. Mm. Imagine he randomly got fat. He'd have a workout video coming mm -hmm. out in two years because we've all been speaking about him. We like we were confused why you were together. Oh, so that's He's, the currency. Yeah. I'm like, what does this translate to? It might be like a negative story at the moment, but yeah. you can spin it later on. Okay. And so maybe that's their strategy. Like. Yeah, and does it have to be like, does it have to work for both parties? Mm, so say for example, like Laurie Harvey negotiate. and Damson, right? <laughs> yeah. That helped Damson. Mm. But it I don't just... know whether you know whether it's going to definitely pay off. It's a bit okay. of a like, a we're going to try yeah. this. Yeah, see gonna... what sticks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Because sometimes some of the situations I look at, I'm just like, Same. only one party has been, like Megan Good gets cooked now. Yeah. <laughs> on account of being a Coretta. Yeah. And then Damson Idris... He's like he gets. I guess he gets points in the men world, <laughs> but then Lori, it was like, oh, she's just with another man. Yeah. So I'm like, isn't it meant to favor both parties if it's gonna be that? You can't always predict. You can't that. always win with those things. Yeah. It's like, in, like to use like another brand thing. It's like Arsenal and Adidas. If they collab, like mm. who who's gonna have the bigger win out of that collaboration? Mm. Like mm. if Adidas. I don't know, like if Arsenal had like the top players, it might be yeah. an Arsenal only story and Adidas is just in the background. Mm. You don't know how it's going to play out. That's true. That's so interesting. Mm. I imagine, yeah, obviously correct me if I'm wrong, that it's kind of hard to demonstrate that you've hit KPIs. Mm. How do you do that? That is, I think, one of the biggest challenges in the industry still. Like I think there's so many different metrics that people 
so basically like measurement tools mm -hmm. that people use to explain the value of their mm -hmm. work but like we we use all the industry standard ones but like I would love I mean I don't have time right now but I'd love to come up with a different method to prove the success and the impact mm. and what I can currently tell is like when we do loads of stuff and I think for cer certain clients in particular they don't do anything other than PR which is quite a risky strategy if you're a new business mm -hmm. so I can quite clearly see off the back of us doing work they'll be like oh my gosh the biggest retailer just got in contact with us because they saw the mm. piece that you landed for us mm -hmm. so I know that there's clear impact yeah. from the result mm -hmm. when you're working with like a giant brand exactly. it's way harder yeah. to show that you've like delivered more mm. sales for them but i think there's clever ways like some of the founders i'm working with are coming up with really smart ways to like demonstrate the value of articles to them as a business yeah. and so i'm yeah. kind of working with them to figure out like how because they tell me the mm. impacts i'm mm. not even I, like i can say here's all the things we've got you and then yeah. they'll be like actually there was a huge boost mm -hmm. of traffic or like actually I got mm -hmm. six new leads from da 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 mm -hmm. and like so they're coming back to but, me with yeah. the measurements and I, I arguably think that's probably the smarter way to do it than us mm -hmm. saying it's successful like you tell me if it's mm -hmm. successful because like with the, the old school way of doing it is that you'd be like we got you 20 pieces of coverage and we got a social mm -hmm. campaign and mm -hmm. 10 influencers posted it and oh well what a success and mm -hmm. here's all the impressions but like actually if you from a brand perspective, you'll see the uptake and you'll only know that when yeah. you're like in-house. Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, we're, we're kind of doing it the other way around more recently with clients. Mm. I'd imagine like it's kind of different depending on who you're speaking to. Because I think if it's like a, a client, like an individual person, if you let them know, oh, I've worked with this brand, this brand, this brand, this brand, they could be like, oh, sold. Because clearly you've got like the right mm -hmm. network. But obviously if you're speaking to a brand, okay, yeah, you worked with other people, but what did you do for them kind of thing? That's interesting in itself. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. And I think with brands as well, like, I think it's we're harder sell to, like, brands, mm. I think, because we're not doing things the way that every other agency is doing it. Yeah. And so it's about a brand that's being, like, ready to, like, push forward in mm. a different direction, like, and do things a bit differently mm. and not just... Because what tends to be the case with, like, big, gigantic, yeah, like retailers or brands or whatever is they have so many systems set up off the back of the way things have always been done oh, yeah. it's really really hard to get, to get them to change even if it doesn't give them any result yeah. and so what you end up doing is like doing a bit of a hybrid like mm -hmm. of the old school way and the new school way and then trying to move them along slowly and slowly yeah. but like the biggest way to get a big brand to change is to show them a little guy doing it mm. with more impacts in front of them. And then yeah. suddenly they're like, oh, we need to change our strategy. Yeah, you did. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. I was going to say, do you find it easier then to reach out to a brand? If we're going with a brand, that the best brand to work with is one that wants to move forward, right? Yeah. So do you find it easier then to reach out to a brand or for them to reach out to you because they know that's what they want to do and you are perfect to help them do that? I definitely think them coming inbound is way easier mm. because it's like half the, half the conversations happened. Mm. They've already had the conversation in their head and been like, no, we want to move in this direction. Yeah. So it's a lot easier than me going out cold to somebody. Yeah. Or like through recommendations. I mean, that's the same with everything, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's better when someone introduces you. 100%. I was going to say, because it's a lot of storytelling, what's your creative process like? Like, do you ever have, what happened? Do you have a, um, what's it called? Not a mental block. What's that thing? You hear yeah, block. Creative um, block. Creative yeah, yeah. block. Yeah, yeah. Look at that, man. Yeah, <laughs> creative we're block. It was in the question. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the word I said. <laughs> but yeah, do you ever have like a creative block? And what's what's your process? What's your creativity process look like? Yeah, I I do have creative blocks. Do you know what? I thought, um, I don't know how I keep being creative. We work a four-day week. Okay, nice. And so... That's a great company. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you hear that, guys? Love that. Team, listen. <laughs> <laughs> we work a full day a week. The goal and the ambition for mm. that, for me, was to always, like, I hate being, like, tied to my, like, tied to a space mm -hmm. in general. And I feel like, yeah, we're storytellers. But if we're saying we're out in culture and we know how to, like, 
get conversation going and we know yeah. the right people. Like, especially in like jobs I've had before, I was working like seven days a week, mm. nonstop, like in it, in the thick of it. I wasn't out enjoying stuff. And if yeah. I was, it was like squeezed in. Mm. And so I was like, I feel like in the headspace that you get back from just not being like 24 seven in yeah. the rigmarole of like working, you get space to be a bit more creative. 100%. Um, and like my team love to just like get in the thick of things mm. anyway. And like, I think also if you're expecting your team, which I'm not expecting them, but they do it anyway, but like to go out and stuff, it's like, it's quite full on. Like yeah. I used to work with alcohol brands and like, I remember like Tuesday night I'd have to, Tuesday also like what is popping on a Tuesday night? Apparently my life. I have to go <laughs> do like guest lists, host mm. some people, do this nonsense, then come back and like be in the office for 6 a.m. Mm. because I needed to send out pictures to mm. all these desks, like online. It wasn't like I was doing anything crazy, but mm. like 6 a.m. and I had to do the full day of work. And then if I missed, I had too many meetings, I'd be at work until 10 mm. p.m. And it's like, that's quite taxing. And I don't mm. get a day off. And then I might have not finished my work for the week. So I'll be working on my Saturday and Sunday mm -hmm. because it's just, that is just not a normal Where pace. Live, no. yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, I have tried to like ensure that there's space to be creativity. Yeah. Like one of the team is like a jazz singer. On oh, nice. side, like, and so she's always at the studio and stuff. And I'm like, let's just be like human about how mm -hmm. we want to move forward as a workplace. Yeah. Like yesterday we were all like banging our head against the wall. Blue Monday apparently, didn't know that. They love to tell me that. And I was just like, nice. let's go home early. Like yeah. no one's seeing anything. Our brains yeah. are like, well, you know, you're just sitting around. You're just, yeah, like, <laughs> nothing's happening. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, we need to just take a minute mm. and just do it from home. But like, that's kind of the vibe that I wanna continue. That's with. amazing, you know. Yeah. I feel like running your own agency is not, it's not an easy thing to do. No. Like I've really heard stories and stuff. I think that's amazing. I feel, it's actually the hood. Yeah, it's yeah. the ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. the hood. And I think like... Ghetto. <laughs> literally. La, ta, ta, ta. <laughs> what about that, guys? <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's so nice how like you're very, very consistent mm. with, yeah. with everything. And, and you're, you think about everything. I think you're, you're think, Yeah, you're consistent. <laughs> no, but your consistency is so detailed and so intentional all the way from why you want to start the brand to the name, what it represented, mm -hmm. to actually how you relate with your staff, how you relate with um, the clients, the kind of jobs you take on. That's great, man. Wow, mm -hmm. thank That's you. absolutely great. Yeah, you did an amazing job, man. Thanks. You really are. That is so cute. <laughs> so what's, your, what's your most favorite thing about running your own agency or having your own agency? Um, do you know what I think it is? Is that the possibilities are endless. Mm. And like, that can always also be a little bit overwhelming yeah because for me i'm just like i'll have a convo with someone and be like, oh my god we could do this and we could do that yeah. blah, blah, blah. um but i think that is like i just love that if you want to make it happen yeah you can yeah like no one's telling me that i can't do anything other than my brain yeah like mm. and lack of time and mm -hmm. being a mom a couple of things but yeah. like <laughs> but generally speaking hey <laughs> um generally speaking like it feels like it's an endless pool of opportunity. Yeah. I'd say. That's so cool, man. I absolutely love that. Yeah. I'm glad that you can give it to me, man. <laughs> Is that for me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 you said, hmm? to. Cheers, big ass. Man is here. Like, yeah, is good? Lean says, says hi, guys. The Z in the Lean's threw me off. <laughs> to lose his eyes. <laughs> you see that exchange? This is yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah. See what you handed him? Yeah. Mm. My Why? chain. What would have happened if you went throughout this without your chain on? It just I haven't had this since uh, since Halloween. Oh no. I know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mom got my baby back. Oh, I'm really happy for you. You should be. <laughs> oh gosh, I love her. Yes, <laughs> one seen the boogers in this bad boy. Oh. oh. Only you knew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's not trying to know. She's not trying to be a PR. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask, is there any industry that you want to work in that you haven't yet? Because uh... remember, you mentioned you mentioned um, fashion earlier. So would you work in fashion from a PR standpoint? I'd work. 
I'd work with a fashion client. Mm -hmm. We we work, well, it's not hardcore fashion. We work with Ace and Tate, so they're like, I wear. But like, I would work with a fashion brand. Mm. I think there's some cool brands out there that I would love to work with, actually. Mm. Um, So it's not a no, it was more that the the fashion agency was like, not cute. Like, it was, it was actually like Devil Wears Prada on heat. Kind oh, of yeah. energy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Izzy's a fool. Is it? Mark <laughs> yeah. a text. Oh, gosh. Send a text. Yo, run my shit quickly. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> yeah, I've got someone here. Bring that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> don't do like that. <laughs> That's exactly what he did. <laughs> I don't care. He really brought it. You say Liz was in the area on <laughs> the <laughs> <a> morning. <laughs> He said to me, I'm going to shop it by Brent's. I didn't ask for it. He was mm. talking to me about something else. And he said, ah, oh, I'm going to run it by Brent's. Mm. Mm. You said? And he's just blinging all over the place. Love that. <laughs> 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 um, want, um, yeah, um, I want to ask you. I can kind of imagine that this would be a bad situation. Yeah, so God forbid, right? Okay. But could a PR agency need a PR agency? <gasps> I was going to ask that. I was actually going to ask that. Like, yeah. Do you have a PR agency? As in to PR us. Like, does yeah. a PR, yeah, like, mm. does a PR agency need PR too? Don't yeah. ask a question like it's a weird question. Come That's, on. Yeah, that is. <laughs> they, Rockers. A PR agency does need PR. Yeah, but do you have a PR? And then another. No. <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, but see, that's, well, that's the thing then. Yeah. Because, well, you might have it though. Like, I wouldn't because okay. that's mm-hmm. our job. So, like, mm-hmm. I yeah. wouldn't outsource something like that. But if okay. you were a giant agency, yeah. and, like, let's say you worked with, I don't know, like, so actually a lot of like big ad marketing and some PR agencies mm-hmm. have someone who does do PR for them. Who okay. like actually, you know, if they win a new client, like they're working yeah. with Shell. Or okay. Just spin yeah. a little narrative to be mm. like, oh my God, we're helping them do green <laughs> renewal. And like, this is great for the, the climate. And you know, like they You're need- You're such a character. <laughs> 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 that is the guest host. I love it. I <laughs> the guest host. <laughs> love it. What are your days off from your PRAC <laughs> yeah, up in here in bus? <laughs> I mean, I'd love that. I love it. <laughs> well, I'm going to Jamaica next week, so if you want to swap. Oh, do you, do you want me to take over for you? Yeah, man. Uh, can I borrow your chain so that I can go? Yeah, need you for the holiday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. It's true. You need to start in Jamaica. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm jealous. I want to go to Jamaica. Everyone seems to be there this Feels like bear the new Ghana. people are there. Yeah, really? I feel like it's the new Ghana. Yeah, like, in this last couple of weeks, bear people are there. I don't understand what's going on. Yeah, mm. truly. Mm. Like, everyone's, like, popping off on my feet. I'm so jealous. Good time, man. I didn't know that. Good time. What? My algorithm has just been showing Nigerian <laughs> Ghana. <laughs> Nigeria. <laughs> Nigeria. <laughs> my algorithm knows I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Sprinkle on the St. Lucia. But Jamaica has not come up. So really? Jada yeah. Kingdom is as Jamaican as my algorithm has been <laughs> in the last week. <laughs> Basically, that is funny. Well, no, because I was thinking with the PR uh, PR agency having a PR right or having PR right. Because mm. I'm thinking, say a PR agency is in trouble, in trouble. Clearly, you that can't sort it out because if you could, you wouldn't be in trouble. <laughs> so you need somebody else. True. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There are like it would be more like um, PR agencies that do like business to business. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But like my whole thing is that shouldn't be a separate thing anyway. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It's all one story. Why are you singing yeah. something different to the industry that you would to a consumer? I was gonna say, would you have, would you have to shout out? So say there was a PR agency, not yours, because obviously you're lit. Thanks. But say there was a PR agency that was doing foolishness, right? Yeah. And they needed another PR agency. Say they needed you guys to come in and help them clean up, right? Because mm. you guys are great at that. Mm. Would they need to shout you out, or can they just go no. ahead as if they it was their idea too? No. So actually, this is the thing that I don't love about the industry is that you yeah. don't have to tell anyone that you work with the PR. Really. And actually, a lot of people don't. Like, I actually did a thingy the other day about this. Like, actually irritates me. You know how, like, you go on set and, like, yeah. you do a magazine sheet and they're like, shout out to the hairstylist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone gets bloody tagged. Like, the reason you got the front cover was your PR agency. Mm. Oh, I didn't Silence. Like it. oh. It's like, thanks so much, Elle, for this front cover. It's like, mm. Elle, Elle didn't do this. Like, <laughs> babes. like, we've been grafting for the last three months. That's a thankless job. Yeah. You really like, have to love what you do then. Truly. Damn. Like, I'm literally like, anyone want to... Say thanks to. But then, can you post it on your page and be like, yeah. this is who we works with? Or do they make you sign NDA and be like, hey, don't tell my business? Uh, most of the time you can post it on yours. But okay. like, I think it should be like, 
I don't know why it's like hidden. I think it should be a collaborative post. You see how you go on yeah, Instagram and, and it you says, share yeah. It. Because so the perception you're person. trying to give off is, is that, that you're you, so popular. Is that you patterned up. So yeah. you, well, you did like it. You don't, yeah, but you don't want to do that. If I if I read for your PR label and then yeah. I got on a the, the magazine cover and all yeah. that, I'm trying to make it look like I'm so popping. I'm on the magazine cover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to be giving See? away the tricks. But oh, you know what I would think though? Big up my PR company. But I would think though. No. Yeah, yeah, I would think I get, that you I were know, like one. you're great at, at what you do, but the PR helped facilitate this. Yeah, and the reason why you could still get it was because you're great at what you do. Like you're still the person that was marketed for this. But, but it's, it's, they're pulling strings in it, and it's tricking the consumers in that. So once you break that fourth trust. wall, yeah, that trust, mm. then it doesn't the, the effect's not doing the same thing. Once I'm giving the, I want to give the perception of elevation in it. You see why you can't it go around wishing for what people could, have. Me. <laughs> yeah, I think that this is what people's thought process think, yeah. is. But I think that's short-sighted because I would say that you are so confident in your brand that you're like, I need yeah. to handle my shiz because I'm so, I am so elevated. Because it's lit having a team, you know, say my team yeah. will handle this. No, it's I so think, lit. But that's why you'll get customers because it'll be word of mouth, innit? So people can see when someone's handled well, innit? And then, so I would tell, it would be word of mouth, I would tell, other, I would tell other artists, people why in my it? industry, okay. who my PR team right, is, this okay. is, and give it that way. I'm not question. telling the masses. Mm. So if that's the case, why is it okay to tell everyone who did your makeup? Because your face weren't looking the same at the beginning. Okay. Why is that something that you're like, I don't mind sharing that. Or the stylist. The stylist. You didn't put your outfit together, hon. Mm. So why is that okay to share that? See, that's true. But you're elevating your look. Some people don't. Some people don't tell people they got stylists. Yeah, but the one. Sometimes it's good for the association because there's a stylist on a certain level, isn't it? So when the stylist is a certain level, Mm. like um, Stormzy's one. Melissa, Melissa's oh, yeah. wardrobe so money. So if I was back yeah. with Melissa, I'll post that yeah. to mm. let people know because the association's there, okay, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's just some random thing that I'm thinking, I'm moving like I've got the swag. I'm not telling people that <laughs> I've got no style. Yeah, that's sad though. So what that's that, the game. What <laughs> what that means then is that, which is what my thinking is, is that your PR agency needs to be so elevated and lit that you that you want to shut them out. Yeah, it's so rare for you to want to do it. Mm, so maybe. if someone if someone was like, oh, actually no, they're doing bits. That would make you want to say, oh, look, I'm associated with them mm. who also look after X, Y, Z. That's what it is. That's what people like, isn't it? That kind of like, clout and So basically, you need to do shit. more PR for your PR agency. Basically. Here I am. Because I think bare people... Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Case in point. I see, I see bare things happening. Like I see people saying things and doing things. And in my mm. mind, I'm saying, this is a PR company. Mm. Like, mm. normal people fair, will just I think also, this is just normal. Can I highlight mm. that? Say, I don't do any I don't write statements or anything for him yeah like that isn't what we do at mm. all with him mm. we're just like to be fair if you hear say speak exactly. you know it comes no. from straight from the heart man. that man means everything he says agree, agree. Yeah. I actually don't write stuff for any of my clients because yeah. they're all about what they're saying mm. it's like that isn't really what I Oh, so is that something that they come to? They go to their PR agency agencies to do. So, say someone's messed up or done something, mm, and they do that statement. statement. Yeah, they actually have to request that. Yeah, you'd like it's part of like crisis comms or whatever. Okay. Yeah, so you'd have to issue a statement and like, yeah. Because I thought they would call them like, say Kevin Hart. Mm-hmm. Not I love Kevin Hart anyway, but say it was Kevin Hart, right? Yeah. I thought they called him like Kevin, Mister Hart. <laughs> we've sent the statement. Please use it. Like. Yeah. Can your PR agency do that oh as well? Can God. they be like, Sorry. yeah. Did you not watch do this? Have you watched yeah. Lyft? No. Not yet. Mm. Mm. Don't, mm. don't bother. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, PR on that one. No, like, <laughs> PR on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I need to watch it. Obviously, I didn't do a good job because I didn't really hear about it. Oh, it was because I follow him and stuff because he was in London the other day and I was like oh I love him oh. <laughs> um, oh, he should lovely. only because com- I really like Kevin Hart so. he should yeah. only do comedy well you just said he's not funny anymore so how does he the man isn't. win yeah but he's, he can't do he's trying to do serious roles but like, the dad one, the father, yeah, was the father's day. Yeah, I thought day. that was quite cute. Yeah, but no, not that, that was that really action sweet. serious. Yeah. Like he's trying to, he's yeah, trying to be the big man. It's not him, and he's short. What was it? Okay. There's a scene oh, where he's you walking. You can't be shortest. There's a team scene where he's walking on the screen with two gal, and he's the shortest on the screen. But he's supposed to be the leader. <laughs> but they didn't do camera tricks. No, yeah. even like Tom scene. Cruise lets you film from a certain yeah. angle, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's fine. He's scene. this guy's got no problems it's being short. No, that's not on, mate. It's trying to own his height. That's nah, not on, mate. It's not working. It's not <laughs> I mean, working. Yeah. I'm paying your bills. You make me look tall. Let me silly. It's true. I'm confused. You're trying to be serious the whole movie. I'm saying this ain't your story, Kelly. So what's funny about Kevin Hart? <laughs> Good morning. Morning, caller. Morning, morning, guys. Uh, Black Rover. Morning, Black Rover. How you guys doing? Good, thank you. How are you? Good, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I just wanted to ask. A, I put a question in the chat. I just wanted to. I know you were talking about some other stuff, so I might have gone further up. But um, um, Rachel, what would you do to 
give advice to like someone like you know Reese Wabara, the guy that does Manny Devoir, um, because he's oh. like he's had like a really successful brand, like his brand is killing it. But I think he his personal brand is kind of moving in the other direction of his mm-hmm. his okay. his, uh, um, his uh, company, and and it's probably self inflicted. So what what would you? I know you say you know celebrity PR, but what type of um, PR would you give for uh, for someone like that who's um, who's maybe personal brand is not at the same level of their their business, and that might adversely affect the business in the long run if it continues. MDB. So what's his reputation currently? So Sorry. He's got MDB story. brand. He's run that for years. Really nice, really good brand. But he opened a store in Oxford Street um, a while ago, or a couple months ago and whatnot. But then he went on Twitter a couple of weeks ago to basically say that he's the first black-owned store and, yes. da, 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 and no one yeah. supported him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's that guy. That felt like that was all for clicks and it was. interactions mm. as well. It was. Mm. It was. It was a marketing... Um, I just keep telling you people, if you don't nah. like something... Don't engage with it. Mm, I agree with you. I think because he come and said he stepped down as CEO or something. Yeah, but he's lying. That he might can't. not even be true either. He's lying, he's lying true. about that. He's lying. He's, he was lying about that. Okay, see, yeah. What was your question though? Sorry. What advice would you give to someone like him, where his brand's doing well, but his personal his brand's personal brand, not yeah, good? Uh, uh, yeah. To your point, like, is his personal brand actually not doing that well? Like, he's mm. getting headlines right now, and like, mm. to be honest, was anyone talking about the store opening that hard? No. Like, this is like transcended much bigger like mm. where he probably wouldn't have got someone like this is me just guessing he mm. might not have got a store opening and it being covered on the mail online for example yeah most read publication mm. but him saying that provocative statement has Did. actually probably generated like six different articles off the back mm. of it and driven people to go to his store mm. so like it depends on i don't i don't this isn't how I would run stuff at yeah. all. Like, I wouldn't use bad PR to, like, elevate a brand. No, I was going to ask that next, yeah. That's not really where my moral compass is at. Like, I yeah. don't need... I don't believe in that type of trickery mm. to get the point across. But it is a successful tactic. Mm. Like, and sometimes, to your point, like, just don't engage with it. The more yeah. that we talk about it... And I actually think, like, the black community is so... Um, we love to chat. And, like... Yeah. Girl. Even when, even when something is like quite clearly just there to for like clickbait, for mm-hmm. anger, yeah. and yeah. then yeah. everyone gets when they get so many pictures, they say it's someone else's side, they say it's the cracker side. They, they do that every do time. That. They, they know that. what they're doing. They yeah. know and the cracker story. Every different time, people. yeah. <laughs> Like honestly, Black they know. Is a good Kano PR and who was it the other day? Kano and um, I can't remember. Uh, from oh my god, what is the film called? Kid Out Hood. Yeah. No Clark. Yeah, they oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They got him confused on like three different places. Yeah, but I've just... seen a PR company do that on purpose. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm that's saying. saying. Mm. So she like, said she doesn't believe in that trickery. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they do it on purpose. That's not outrageous. Yeah, yeah, but so well, you know every people... time yeah. black people jump on it and we make it an actual story. It's a story. fake outrage. It's yeah. literally like um, mm. black Twitter with Love Island. Like the, the cultural oh, capital I'm that so black sick of that people have to drive conversation is nuts. And like when you don't... Like, it irritates me because I know that we're just being played, basically, mm-hmm. by people that genuinely don't really care. They're just mm-hmm. doing it to make sure that their check is cleared. Mm-hmm. Like, at the end of the day, the person who's at the front, mm-hmm. maybe they're provocative, maybe they don't mind yeah. being, like, cancelled. Yeah. But ultimately, the people in the middle want to get paid, so mm-hmm. they're going to do it by any means possible. Yeah. And that sometimes looks like, you know, him saying outrageous statements like that. Yeah. So I don't know what that is. But don't you also think... Don't you also think that there's something to be said for like cultural capital in terms of like like I always look at people like Stephen Bartlett and also um, and also Reese Wilbur where they've they've kind of blown they've made it their their brand is big they're really big in like the gen pop space but maybe they haven't got that same capital within the quote unquote urban black community so they have to double back and do certain things to make to see if like it's always weird when you have to retroactively try and get 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 you get a black people on site after you already blown. But but they even see sometimes there's cultural capital in in coming back to the audience where we we shift the culture. So even if they're big on Good Morning GMTV, whatever that that audience like, um, they still need to come back. And sometimes it's a harder it's a harder yeah. thing to do to get big in the gem pop and then come back to your community than it is to get big in your community and then go gem pop like someone like Kano, for example. Yeah. So that's such a good point and so true. I, I was going to ask you actually, who would you say is an example that's done it well the other way around? I, I think say- Steve, Steve Bartlett's actually doing it well because he, he you know, if he always goes to like Black Tech Fest and he goes to all of these yeah. things because now he's like, he's trying to ingratiate himself back with us and he knows that he's, he hasn't got the same backstory as a lot of people. He's not from London. He's not, so he, he's doing all of the stuff that you would, 
I would call it, he's almost, he's doing all black turns press. He's, he's, I saw recently he got like, he's got someone to intern, some, a black girl to intern at his company. He's almost doing almost, I won't call it pro bono, but he's almost doing like a, <laughs> I don't know how to it's word it, but he's, he, yeah, he's doing it through almost like a, cha- I don't want to say charitable, it's not bad, mm. but like, he's doing it that oh, way rather well, yeah, than yeah, like, he's going back to the publications like, that he wasn't going on. Yeah. Mm. He's oh, kind right. of charitable he's to people to, very, very black people to like him. Okay. I heard he's a extremely yeah. horrible person. I, I am. Um, so PR is good. <laughs> is it? Is it? <laughs> it I, don't, I don't know whether <laughs> I've, I've met him like once and I actually thought he was all right. Like, I didn't have some deep converse. So I'm not here to like, mm. <laughs> championing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you don't need to cast a special. But I do think that your point is a really valid one about him kind of like actually kind of dismissing the black community on his rise to the top and now having to retrofit and like retro love the black people and go, mm. but that isn't, it, What? Do, how do you feel about that strategy? Do you think that that's, an, do you feel like that's gonna work? Do you think black people are willing to take him back? No, we're not. I think we, a lot of people can see through it. And also it's the way you do it. Even if he had that, that intention, it's the, the fact that you can't, you can't twist people's arms to love you and that's what he's doing a little bit yeah. and it's like if he had if he had, if he just if he'd gone on to like i don't know if he got well, if he'd gone to like the philly and chunk show if he'd gone to these emails if he started doing our press and like slowly ingratiating himself it probably would have happened naturally but because he's by tweeting like why don't you love me kind of thing if that like, people would people want <laughs> if he was going to double down yeah i mean i i agree with you i suppose there's an, another way to look at it is that he's made his money and now now he's got his money he might not have any purpose in mm, which for that. Yeah, and so yeah. white truth. people do it as well, where they get lo- get bare rich, then they suddenly want to become philanthropic and start mm-hmm. begging to like, we're gonna mentor a black business and da 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 da. And black people accept it. So in a way, why are we like hating so hard on him coming back? At mm. least, at least it's someone that looks like us that's actually coming back. Mm. It's yeah. worse when they get to the top and they actually still try and disregard mm. the Black, yeah. blackness. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't agree with the way he's done it, but like... I said coming back, you know, I'm trying to work out when he was ever here. <laughs> Stop it. Honestly, I don't know. That's it. Oh. When was he ever here? Man, he's coming back. Who the hell is... Anyway. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. You're right. You're right. I don't know if he ever has been there, but like... I, d- I think he's an interesting. I think he's an interesting character. I can't think of, off the top of my mind, um, someone who has had the same level of success who has single-handedly stayed in the black community. Oh. That's what mm, I'm yeah, sure. questioning right now. Like we don't that's have the same. Good, we don't have the same spaces as the US. Like. Yeah. Like we're not mm. we're not able to create an Oprah mm. in the UK. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, so I think there's an element where you have to do a bit of selling out. Mm. What we would look at, as selling Ooh. out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's yeah. hard. It's hard to say. Yeah. Is there any pushback for that in this room? Dun, dun, dun. I mean, I'm waiting. When I when I heard you said obviously, Are you like, in t- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why do you think we can't create an opera? Um, I don't think our society is set up yet for that to happen. So does something need to happen? I don't know from society or from the people. Do you that know can what I, I think? We've made massive headway in the last five years. Like, there's no doubt about it, but. I don't know if there's enough black people at the top to mm. help to create the amount of impact that I think we could have. Considering that black people, I personally believe, create the 99% of exactly. culture. And like, mm. I went to random, but I went to Prague the other day and I was just like, oh, this is what the UK would be like but without any of the colonization. Mm. Like, mm. it's white to white. Mm-hmm. And I... I kind of feel like when people argue, like to your point about like whether you should have like more black people and blah blah blah. I, I don't know. I'm going off on a tangent. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying I, to think how I'm getting back to my point. But can you talk while I? Have that <laughs> <moment>? <laughs> I was just gonna say because obviously, obviously um, yeah. Black girls away. Yeah, black girl. Thank you, oh, man. Thank you, hun. Yeah. Cool. Cheers. Nice. Cheers. 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 Cheers.
Dad, I really went on a tangent there. I was I lost. I like how Mr. did that. Cheeky little banana. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a professional at my job. <laughs> Emmanuel, sorry, as you were no, saying. Yeah, I was just going to say, you said um, something along the lines of, um, you're not sure if there's certain things or people that can help us do that, right? Mm. Why, why do we require, why do you think we require help? Why can't we do it for ourselves? Trisha needed help. I think we need Trisha. Trisha needed her. Who's Trisha? Oh, Trisha. Well, obviously, she's saying from Big Brother. No, she's no, saying we ITV. couldn't do it. Um, oh, yeah, Oprah, Oprah, but yeah. We got, we got a Trisha. Trisha went to the US, babes. Oh, did she? she? Yeah. No. But she was more successful here. Yeah, far, Trisha. Far more, right? She was more successful here than when she went to America. Still, she went to the US, so clearly there was a ceiling. Well, Jeremy Carr went there too, didn't he? Yeah, what? He came back. <laughs> <laughs> but but what I'm trying to say is like like you rightly said I I think obviously black people 99 percent trends everything's us yeah right obviously you one may argue we don't have the infrastructure right now right and like you said we don't have the people who may be in those key positions mm. but if everything is us and people have to come to us for the content mm. for the energy for everything right mm. why can't we then kind of switch off that tap for a little or at least close it a bit and then divert most of that to doing something for ourselves. So we start a company, we come to Axe and Saw, mm. we put it out to our people, mm. and everything that we jump on, other people jump on, other races jump on anyway, mm. but it's controlled by us. Mm. Um, my like mini analogy to mm. that is when I started Axe and Saw, the team was a lot more majority black mm -hmm. and um, or people of color, and it was also the time that every agency needed to appear to be diverse. Okay. Yeah. So did everyone get inflated titles and increased salaries? Yes. Mm. Can I keep up with that? No. no. Like, and that is just a small slice of why it's a little bit harder, and why you kind of need bigger powers at play. And I spoke to somebody as um, somebody the other day who's a black business owner. And it's like, how do you end up getting loads of these giant, um, like retained clients? Because mm. actually, a lot of them work with diverse agencies, mm. but they work with them on a project basis. Yeah. And unless you have that as a retained income, you can't really predict and grow your team properly. Mm. And yet, they have all of those other agencies that are white owned mm -hmm. on retained clients, and they're the ones that are able to poach. You're so, you know, and so the cycle is just like it's that's a microcosm of what I think happens in society mm. when it comes to yes, you're right, we're creating the culture, we're creating the waves, da, 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 but then they they buy it mm. from right underneath your nose, yeah. and then you're back at square one again, and it's so hard to keep getting yourself back on, mm. and then to also not only get back on, but then like speed past where mm -hmm. they've invested in, you end up in this like consistent annoying loop so you kind of need something to like help help shift mm -hmm. the catalyst like i even think that when i work with creatives like some creatives give away like black creatives give away their amazing like s teams that mm. are actually about it mm. at a dirt poor cheap mm -hmm. mm. like and then i look at the agencies that are putting out the work as if they're like on the money with mm -hmm. their culture when yeah it's like the whole thing is nuts but then that big let's say we're talking about nike right and like a small collective of black creatives have come together created an agency mm -hmm. and they're like doing their thing let's say this giant agency that's global they have nike on retainer mm -hmm. nike comes and gives a brief we need to do something about london and urban streetwear and da 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 da, da. they'll just outsource it to that mm -hmm. team but nike won't be like let's cut ties <laughs> with the big people and stop paying them 15k yeah. a month or whatever yeah. it is Let's literally reinvest in the people that are always delivering. Our, no one does that. No one and that's does. what I mean about the the whole shift that needs to happen yeah. for it to be able to create. Like you need like NBA stars creating their own mm. basketball leagues. Do you know what I mean? Like that kind of level of investment needs to mm. happen. And even with that investment, they're struggling. But isn't isn't that something that's you see as as starting to be a yes. potential reality? You know what I'm saying? So yeah, like, I do. I yeah. do. So, so I think we've moved forward a hundred percent. Like mm. I think we're going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't think it's all negative. I think yeah. I think it's amazing to see how much has mm -hmm. happened actually in the last five years, like from a business perspective as well. Mm. 
we are starting to have more ownership. That's 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 basically how I see it because obviously nothing's gonna happen overnight. You know what I'm saying? And I'm pretty sure if you um same person you are, same experiences, but this was back in the eighties, you may not have been able to create accent so hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? But because of you, there will be somebody who'll come after us who'll do certain things. So I think all of us a kind of, you know what I mean, laying we're making, that. Yeah, we're doing something. I completely agree. Mm. I don't. I definitely don't think it's a negative, and I wasn't saying it to be like. Oh yeah, of course not. Negative yeah. about like not creating an Oprah, but mm. I was actually randomly listening to a podcast with Ice Cube the other day. <laughs> <laughs> that was a throwback. But he's creating some like other league of like the yeah. NBA. Big three. Had, what's yeah. it called? The big big three. three. Yeah. The NBA shut that down. Yeah, mm. that's my point. And he had quite a lot of investment. Mm. Yeah, a lot of traction. A lot of yeah. ex players. Mm-hmm. He was doing. Like if they, if they even have just he couldn't get it on not channels. even supported him but just didn't mm-hmm. hold Squash him back it. he yeah. would have been because that was that was doing that was doing stuff right it's kind of quiet down now but again it's because got to be for the NBA yeah mm. and that's that's in America where you actually have more, probably more billionaires mm. you know we have probably a bit more power mm-hmm. as a as a race out mm-hmm. there as well do you know what I mean yeah I d- yeah I definitely get what you're saying I, I mean I think. To me, what I'm hearing is just obviously the difficulty that comes along with business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Always. You know what I mean? So, so it's something that's kind of normal. And I think sometimes, I'm not saying that this is what you're doing, by the way. I'm just saying sometimes we kind of look at certain things and think, okay, if it doesn't happen in our lifetime, oh, oh. It's, it's something that's difficult or it's not happening. Yeah. But when you look at actually the grand scheme of things. 100%. Like things take a long time. 100%. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think we've done crazy even in our time already. You know what I'm I saying? I completely agree. Like, I don't think that, not like saying this is a neg to my family, but I don't think they would have ever thought I would have yeah. run an agency. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, when I said I worked in PR, I don't think they thought that would even be a trajectory for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't really think that for me. So, yeah. like, I, I 100% like it will have a ripple effect mm-hmm. to like another person 100%. that will do more with the space. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm not ending on a neggy. Oh, not at all. No, definitely not. Positive poly over here. It can, only be positive. <laughs> it can only be positive when you're talking with the new black. That's right. That's right, baby. <laughs> That's right, baby. <laughs> well, we, have, we have three questions that we ask our lovely guests. Okay. I tried the first two and then we'll do the last one. Okay. So tell us something that nobody knows about you and then also your biggest life lesson. I know. It could be anything, though. It could be as wow. random as you want it to be. Nobody knows about me. Nobody knows. Well... Yeah. Majority of people don't know. <laughs> um, Might have a guilty pleasure. Okay, this isn't that exciting, but um, <laughs> I used to have a reputation in my family for like quitting or being fired from jobs. Okay. And you started your own agency. Yeah. <laughs> that way you can't get fired anymore. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's the spirit. So how am I going to get fired now? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, had lots of famous stories of me getting fired or quitting in my family. It's like, it's my thing. What's the um quickest way? Mm-hmm. The, yeah, the quickest job you quit. Like, how long <laughs> were you at a job for when you quit? Um, I quit the same day. <laughs> what was this? <laughs> when I was younger, like maybe like 18, 19. Okay. Did you quit? Did you go on a lunch break and not come back? Or did you yeah, actually let them know? I quit on a lunch break. I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it. I feel like working in the industry, yeah, lunch break must be like, you just don't know what's going to happen after this. Yeah. Like, are they going to come back? Are they not? It's true. I would have bets. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I also I once got found out. I called in sick when I had a like retail job. I oh, called yeah. in sick like an idiot, and I went out the night before and I post. You know, and you posted everything uh, on your Facebook status. They don't have your colleagues on social media. I, I literally learned that that the hard way. there and then. Yeah. And then I got a call back. They were like, "All right, no worries, Rachel, don't come in." And I got a call back, and they were like, "Hey, um." Says that you're in uh, the Abyss Hotel around the corner. Yeah, first of all, though, yeah, first of all, first yeah, of all, yeah, they're out of order because I could be, I could have gone out last night, planned to go to work today, but when I woke up, found out I was sick. It's true. Yeah, sickness hasn't got time. Mm, yeah, I did post pictures though. One hundred percent, but that's yeah. a trick. <laughs> <laughs> As a lawyer, I'm going down with them. Like, no, yes, uh, meant that. My girls always rinse me for like the dumbest moments because then yeah. she had to like jump on the phone. She actually lost her voice, so I had to give her the phone. She was like. I'm yeah, actually yeah. dying. What, no, I'm actually <laughs> dying. <laughs> so yeah, that wasn't cute. And Rake, what time do you think you come in? Retail was brutal, you know. Brutal. They did not care. Rake, can you do the afternoon shift then? <laughs> no, I said I'm dying. Oh, I swear to God. Honestly, yeah, yeah. retail really teaches you. Puts you it does. It builds character, man. It does. It does. It really does. Seems like a tough work. It's a lot. It's a lot of work for peanuts. Yeah, it is. It's giving slavery. Anyway, <laughs> um, what's your biggest life lesson? 
biggest life lesson. Uh, lesson. Mm -hmm. mm. I think that you can. A, a bit. I don't know. I don't know. My biggest life lesson is that you can rely on people, mm. and people aren't always out to like get you. Oh, that's nice. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Because I think that, you, like, I don't know. Personally, I've just always been quite, like, single-minded. Like, mm. is anyone really... Like, I'm always looking for someone to, like, F me over a little yeah. bit. And I think definitely in the last... The last, I don't know, last section of my life thus mm. far, like, I've definitely seen, like, people come out and, like, show up and mm. just... You know, you don't expect it. And show it's, up for like, you. It's real cute. That's beautiful. I like that. Thanks. Positive. Right, so the next question, right? So basically, we get our guests to leave a question for the next person. Ooh. And then the next person, you'd answer what the previous person said. Yes. So we had a lovely lady by the name of Jay, and she owns a brand called African Chica. Beautiful brand. Yeah. And um, so she left a question for you. And the question is, Jay. if you were granted a superpower, what would it be? Oh, that's a good one. Isn't it? Um, <laughs> oh, do you know, I used to... I actually thought of this a while ago, and I think I had a really good answer, but... It's gone out of my mind, so that's really <laughs> not helpful, is it? Um, superpower, superpower. I think I would want my superpower to be persuasion. Oh, okay. And I say that because... Well, a Jamaican thing. He's kind of said something similar. Really? Mm. He was mind yeah. control. He's a bit more intense than yours. But yeah, oh, sorry, yeah. carry on. I think because you would actually get people to change in the way that you want them to. You mean do whatever you want them to? I think mind control is quite a heavy way of putting it. And that's why I like it PR. She's, no, she's giving the PR answer. Yeah, exactly. like, she has me sold it. I'm like, oh, that's a good superpower. But <laughs> well, you, said, you said that you said you're said you said that you said just uncut, unedited, yeah. unfiltered. Mind control. Yeah, um, love yeah that. I think persuasion is a gentler way of uh, mm. controlling. You can't already do that. Yeah. PR. But like properly, like I'd love to like actually change like political stuff. And, mm. That's do it. you know what I mean? Like proper big mm. stuff. Use yours for good. Yeah, exactly. Mm. <laughs> Use yours for good. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then What's could you father, kindly leave? I don't think we need to like, control over there, do we? No. <laughs> <laughs> could you leave a question for the next guest, please? Um, could be anything. Yeah. Okay. Like, what is, what would your thirteen-year-old self think of you Ooh. now? Mm. It'd be so cool if you got Sace's question. What was? This was a good question. What was it? It was about um, what are you doing to affect change in your community or something like that. Oh, gosh, I love him. Very oh, on brand, Sace. Yeah. So on brand. What? Did I very on brand. So, oh. so, what would your thirteen-year-old self think of who you are today? Oh, that's beautiful. I like that. This has been great. It's been a very, very great conversation with thanks, you. I hope you come guys. back. Even as a guest host, you're really good. You're a ball of fun. Oh, thanks. Really good vibes. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love I it. can't believe I actually rectified it after my morning. <laughs> 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 yeah, you, you made it eventually, man. Yes, yeah, you did. Oh, and I rate it because I'll be honest, at the first inconvenience, I know. I'm like, I need a nap. I just started saying again. I'm putting this whole day in rice. I, I really can't. pushed through. You really did. <laughs> and I when I came that. in, I was like, <laughs> 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 now we do we really do appreciate everything you went through to get here yeah. we appreciate and you were and you came you're good vibes as well thank you yeah you're a real one you guys were giving me big thank energy you, so that appreciate was really it but please let people know where to follow you and your pr um yeah. agency as well um so i think it's scrolling along the bottom it sure is um but at rachel underscore accent store because your girl rides for that company. Love that, as you should. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then my um, work one is at Axe and Saw with a little underscore. Love that, love that. Thanks. All right. Thanks, guys. No, so thank much you. fun. Thank really you. appreciate it. Really mm -hmm. appreciate it. It's a lot yeah. of fun. Great let's conversations. All right, let's get into outro, people. Okay, thank you guys for tuning in. We really, really, really appreciate it. Please don't forget to like the video. Also, pick up our researchers every single time. Great team we've got. Uh, big up all of you that were in the chat. Black Rock Hold as well. Big up you. Uh, follow us on our social media platforms, The Day After TNB on Instagram, Twitter, and on TikTok. And don't forget, if you want to send your dilemmas in, and this is also the number to call when we're live on air, the number is 075 6484 1073. 
or you can email and you can also email to inquire about the show or to feature on the show if you wish to feature on the show and our email address is the day after at the new black dot com how are you tuesday it's because kicking my ass <laughs> have a great tuesday and we'll see you guys back here tomorrow peace Bye.